just has so much experience coming back at all three levels. Vanier, B- Baptiste, and Jalen Christmas on the line. Kai Garcia, at linebacker. I mean, Kelby Tyree, in these first two weeks, he, uh, punt return for a touchdown, pick six. Uh, and that, that was a kid who a lot of people were saying is, you know, one of the most underrated players in the area. Dan, I was wondering, any other matchups this week uh, that you are anticipating? Uh, well, it's it's one of those 2-0 and teams that we talked about, Gulf Coast. Um, and they're going to go on the road against Port Charlotte. And I, I think that's really going to be a challenge for both teams. You've got two big, tough, physical teams. Uh, for Gulf Coast, it'll be the best team that they've faced so far. It's on the road. Port Charlotte, uh, you know, didn't perform well against Bishop Rowe, kind of rebounded last week against their big rival, Charlotte, really handled them. But traditionally, the week after they play Charlotte, they usually don't play well because those kids get up so much for that Peace River rivalry game. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. And, you know, if Gulf Coast can go to Port Charlotte, come out with a win, be 3-0, and then I think, you know, we're really looking at the Sharks as a team that can continue to make noise the rest of the year. So that's one I'm, I'm anxious to see how that one plays out. And I'm also excited to see uh, South Fort Myers at North Fort Myers. Obviously, North trying to end the skid of two losses to start the season. And an improved South team that uh, lost in overtime in week one and really uh, put the hurt on Riverdale. And after the break, we are going to make our picks in these games. For more in-depth analysis of high school football in Lee and Collier County each week, go to NaplesNews.com and News-Press.com. Let's just do it, okay? Follow us on Instagram at NewsPress Sports and NDN Prep Zone. Let's go! Welcome back. It is time for the pick segment and to recap where we all are at. Dan Nostradamus DeLuca is in first at 17 and 1. Alex is one game back. I am a few games back. We won't talk about that. Uh, Dan, how are you doing it? I don't know, man. You know, I just I just take it one game at a time. Uh, you know, I really have to give uh, all the glory to God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll just try to keep this going. All right, and Alex has sent in his picks, and Ed's going to contribute his thoughts as well. Uh, the first game that we are going to make our picks, Naples at Immokalee. Dan, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, of all the teams traditionally in Collier County, Immokalee has given Naples the most trouble over the years. You know, really had some great battles back in the day when Bill Kramer was at Naples, John Weber at Immokalee. Uh, just some some classic games. I think Naples is, is just better at, at this point. Uh, you know, Mockley, uh really couldn't get the offense going against Golden Gate. It's going to be tough to do that against Naples, even though it's at Immokalee. Sean Simeon, you know, a, a little quietly, he's got he's got two 200-yard games so far averaging like 13 yards a, a carry. He's a real game breaker uh, for Naples. Uh, it's going to be tough for Immokalee to slow that down. I think Naples wins. Ed, agree, disagree? Uh, I agree. Naples will win. I'm kind of excited to see how Immokalee bounces back from a disappointing effort last week against Golden Gate to see turning on Villarreal, a quarterback for Immokalee, see if he can do some damage against Naples and get the uh, – their attack back on track so but yeah I think uh, even though it's at a mockley in a big rivalry game I don't see uh, the Indians being able to knock off the Golden Eagles this week and I'm going to pick Naples as well until a Collier County team knocks them off I'm not going to pick against them and Alex also picked Naples next up we have Estero at Cypress Lake Estero getting their first win last week in a comeback over Lake, who are 2-0. So, Ed, what do you think, which team do you think is getting the win? 
Uh, I will say that I have had a chance to see Cypress Lake the past few years. I have not seen him yet this year. Um, well, actually, I saw him in the preseason. That's a lie. But Cypress Lake is where East Lee is going to be. Cypress Lake has been building up under Joey Mendez the past few years. They actually have some players now. They know the system. They have a quarterback in Tyrese Nelson. They have some really good linebackers and, and defensive play. So Cypress is getting there. The 2-0, and a legit 2-0 and for the teams they played. Estero will be their first, I'm going to say, real test of the season. And I think Estero is going to win. But the reason I think that is because Estero – is a little bit ahead of Cypress on the development chart. You know, they had nine wins last year. Uh, they had a, a really good comeback win against East Lee last week. I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's one of those games that if Cypress can pull it off, maybe they're ready to take that next step. But until they can win that close game and make that play at the end to win one of those, I have to stick with the team that has kind of proven that they can – you know, pull it out at the end. So I'm going to go with Estero. Yeah, this is a, a tough one to call. Uh, Estero has gotten the better of the Panthers the last couple of years. Uh, two years ago, it was a really exciting matchup. I think I'm going to go with Cypress Lake here. They're they're at home. They're two and zero, and I just think they're getting better every year. Um, so I'm going to take Cypress here, Dan. Yeah, I think I am too. Uh, cause I, I think it's a close game. Um, I'm going to go with the home team. But also Estero, even though they came back, they, they've made a lot of mistakes the first two weeks. You know, a lot of penalties, a lot of turnovers, just not really clicking yet. And, uh, you know, Cypress Lake, you know, they feel like they're much improved this year. I'm sure this is a game that they've got circled, and I think they're going to come out and give a good effort. I think it'll be close, but I think Cypress will win. And Alex picked Estero for this one. Next game, South Fort Myers at North Fort Myers. This is a tough one. Dan? I think I'm going to go with South. I think their effort against Riverdale without their best defensive player and one of their best offensive players, you know, missing the game. They're both expected to be back this week. JV and White on defense, Victor Jenkins on offense. I, I think South will be able to do enough on the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think they'll be able to move the ball. And it just haven't seen that consistency yet with North Fort Myers. Um, not real sure uh, about the health situation with Bryce DeRoss. If he's back, obviously that gives North a much better chance. I think it's going to be the team that kind of takes care of the football, doesn't make uh, those mistakes. South has a real good kicking game. Uh, it could come down to that. I, I think it'll be close, but I, I think South will pull it off on the road. Yeah, it, it's a tough call. Coach Pasquale said uh, that Bryce would be kind of day-to-day, -day, so that's going to be a big factor. Um, but I, I agree with you in that I'm not sure what North's identity is on offense yet. Um, and South, you're, you're starting to see Justin White, if Victor Jenkins is going to be back, that th they – know a little bit more about what they want to do. Um, so I think it's going to be close, but I have the Wolf Pack. Ed? Uh, I'm going to agree with you guys. I, I think it'll be close, but I think South pulls it out. One thing is, you know, Chase and Queen has been building up to the season. He's been showing up pretty well. The team with the healthy quarterback who's been playing well versus a team that will either have a uh, a young quarterback or one just coming back from being dinged up, that could be a, a major factor in this one as well. So I'm going to go with the Wolfpack. And Alex picked North Fort Myers on this one, so uh, another game where we disagree on, which we love to see. Next game, we have Bonita Springs at Cape Coral. I'm going to go with Cape Coral to improve to 3 0. That defense in the start of the season has been very good. Dan? Yeah, I, I think Cape Coral uh, defensively, uh, you know, they have to stay disciplined uh, against Bonita Springs. Uh, you know, they've run that offense that it takes all week kind of to prepare for. I just don't know that Bonita Springs has the, a multitude of weapons, uh, you know, to kind of generate the offense that they're going to need to against Cape Coral defense. Uh, yeah, I think Cape wins, and they're going to be 3-0. 
Ed? Yeah, I go with uh, Cave Quarrel as well. Benita Springs does not have Riley Dreamer. It hasn't had him the past two weeks. Of course, with that offense, you need that uh, bellwether back to just take 30, 35 carries. Without uh, Dreamer, they don't have that right now. So Cape Crow's going to be able to load up. They know Bonita Springs isn't going to pass. Uh, they don't have their top back. That's going to be a real tall order to beat the Seahawks with. And Alex also went with Cape Coral. Uh, next, SFCA at CSN. This past week, SFCA lost a big rivalry battle to Canterbury. Uh, they did manage to, to come back from a big deficit, and eventually they lost 35-28. Uh, to Canterbury, can they get their first win this week against CSN, Ed? The funny part is we haven't seen Community School of Naples play on in the continental <laughs> United States yet exactly. this year. Uh, they didn't have a spring game, and then they went to Ireland uh, where they picked up a win, but obviously that's an exhibition game. So this will be their first chance to play an American team. And, you know, it, I hate to say it, SFC may be a good one for them to open with. Not being able to perform against Canterbury, um, a, a team where you know they were down twenty-eight to six in the second quarter before it was delayed because of weather. Uh, CSN, I'll be curious to see what what they really have, but at this point, I'm going to uh, give it to the Seahawks. You know, going overseas and a, a lot of team bonding. Um, you know, maybe that'll come back and and serve them well against the Kings this week. Dan, do the Kings get their first win, or do the Seahawks get their first win on American soil? Uh, I think the Seahawks will win. You know, they've had a bye, can get prepared, get healthy. Um, I think it'll be close, but when in doubt, I always try to go with the home team, so I will pick CSN. And I'm going to go with the home team as well, and so will Alex. We have Eastleigh County at Island Coast. We've been talking about Eastleigh. Do they finally get that first win in two, three years here? Yeah, I think so. I think um, Eastley has done enough these last two weeks, uh, you know, against Mariner, uh, and and last week to kind of show they're they're right on the cusp. I think they'll get over the hump. I think they'll beat Island Coast. Ed, you saw the Gators this past week. Do you think they have what it takes to beat Eastley? Um, I think Eastley will. We'll get their first one as well. Island Coast defense played really well. ECS couldn't get anything going. Running the ball, they pressured Tanner Helton uh, when he dropped back. So defensively, the Gators looked pretty good. Offensively, uh, their line did not hold up well against ECS. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of tackles for loss, a lot of pressure on quarterback Rex Elliott, who took a hellacious hit at one point and was knocked out of the game. Uh, came back in at, for a couple snaps near the end, but a, a young quarterback, uh, offensive line that didn't perform, and then an East Lee team that's got to be hungry to, after two strong uh, efforts the first two weeks to come uh, to come back with goose eggs there. I think the Jaguars will be too motivated this week to get that first win. Yeah, and can't forget – you know, Island Coast week one win, 40 to nothing against Benue Springs. So I, I do think that this is going to be maybe a low-scoring defensive contest between the teams. But Eastley, you know, they have Gary Hagan, they have Victor Georges, they have Laz Rogers, and I, I think those weapons are going to prove to make the difference in this one. Next game, Gulf Coast at Port Charlotte. Uh, Port Charlotte won last week. They beat their rival Charlotte uh, after losing in week one to Bishop Rowe. Uh, Dan, who do you think takes this one? Uh, I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll come down It'll you know, to uh, who makes the last play. Um, I think it'll be poor Charlotte. I think Gulf Coast will give them everything that they have. But I think I'll go back to, you know, we anticipated poor Charlotte was going to be a really good team uh, this season. They haven't really shown us anything to kind of back away from that um you know losing to bishop Royal on the road isn't uh disqualifying but i think they're ready to show that they are who we thought they were and i think they'll be gulf coast but it won't be easy yeah i have port charlotte winning as well uh ed Guerrero and that whole bunch they 
you know, even though the Sharks have impressed us defensively in the first few weeks, I, I think this is going to be too tall a task. Ed, what do you think? Haven't seen Port Charlotte against Vero. Uh, Port Charlotte, when they dropped back to pass, did not look impressive that first week. I know they kind of righted the ship last week against a, a really banged up Charlotte team, but it's going to be hard to go against the Pirates at home. Um, I think Gulf Coast, if they won, I would not be shocked. I think Gulf Coast gives them a game and, and builds momentum heading into week four, but I'm going to give Port Charlotte this one. And Alex also went with Port Charlotte. Next, ECS at Cardinal Mooney. It's going to be uh, maybe the first real test for the Sentinels this season after pretty uh, dominant wins against Palmetto Ridge and Island Coast. For this one, I'm going to go with Cardinal Mooney here. Uh, Last season, they had a 27-24 loss to Bishop Rowe and a 28-27 overtime loss to First Baptist. And um, I just think, you know, that kind of tells you where that team is at. And I think ECS, while they're getting there, they're not quite there yet uh, to get the win over the Cougars. Dan? Yeah, I'm going to go with Mooney. Mo- Mooney's look really good so far this year, getting off their 2-0 start. Uh, outscored their opponents 95-6 to so far. And, uh, you know, really looking like those games last year were kind of foretelling that they're going to be a tough team to deal with this year, and uh, I think they're going to be too much for ECS. I'm going to be a homer here. I'm going to go with ECS. They have this one circled, um, talking to – Coach Mitchell and some of the players, they really want Mooney to prove where they are. Uh, L.J. Blackwell should be ready to go at running back. Uh, So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and maybe they pass their first big test of the season. That would really be a statement win for the Sentinels. And Alex went with Mooney on this one. We have Riverdale at Fort Myers. That's been a comfortable matchup for the Greenies of late. Dan, do you think Riverdale can upset them? I don't think so. I I think Fort Myers, uh, you know, they could get into the trap of looking ahead to next week uh, when they go to Dunbar for what has been, you know, one of the better neighborhood rivalry games uh, in our area uh, for as long as I can remember. But I'm just not sure Riverdale is there yet. Um, I I think they don't really have much of a passing game. They're going to be a little bit one-dimensional, and I I think that Fort Myers defense is just too strong. So I think uh, Fort Myers will get win number 699 at home. And uh, we haven't mentioned it yet, but the Greenies did play last week. They went to uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, and uh, they got beat real bad, 49 nothing. But uh, I like their chances to right the ship this week against the Raiders. Ed? Yeah, they need to get the uh, taste of Aquinas out of their mouths, and I think they will do it against Riverdale. And Alex also went with Fort Myers on this one. And now our game of the week, Bishop Rowe at Dunbar, two teams that made the state semifinals last season. Dan, who do you think takes this one? Oh, you're going to me first? <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Dunbar. I think even though they try to pretend they don't hear what we're saying, I think you were talking to Coach Brown after the game. He wasn't real sure who they were playing this week, or at least that's what he led on to you. I, I think they know <laughs> who they're playing. I think they've heard all of the talk about Bishop Rowe and Carter Smith and that offense and how are you going to stop them. And those uh, that Dunbar defense is going to be ready. Uh, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be uh, a dominating effort. Um, but I think Dunbar will find a way to get it done at home. Bishop Rowe had a, a week off this past week. Uh, their game with Lehigh was postponed. Ed, I know that the Vikings players are, are really excited for this one. Do you think they can pull off the win against Dunbar? Yeah, this is another really good measuring stick uh, for them. I think the Vikings have enough playmakers, and especially now they have some playmakers on defense, which they did not have in the past. Now they can 
match up with Dunbar's offense, I think. I, I think you have a, a young quarterback with Austin Price back there and Vero can make him uncomfortable. So I'm going to give uh, I'm going to give this one to the Vikings. I think it's going to be a great game. Um jealous I will not be there to to see it, but I will be watching the updates very closely from my game. Um but I think uh Vero pulls off the uh, the win at Dunbar. Yeah, this is a really really tough call, I think. Um because I I loved what I saw from the Tigers in the first quarter scoring 20 points really quick. But after that, there were some penalties, there were some turnovers. But, you know, there was also two Dunbar pick sixes. And I, I just think the ability to make plays on defense is just something that, you know, especially in, in those crunch moments, that, that's why Dunbar has won 18 straight games against Lee County opponents. And I think they're going to extend that streak. And so does Alex. He also picked Dunbar. All right. That is it for this episode of Inside Southwest Florida Football Podcast. Stick with us throughout the week at news-press.com and naplesnews.com. Follow us all on Twitter, Alex at NP underscore Alex Martin, Dan at News Press Dan, Ed at Ed Reed underscore NP, and me at Dustin B. Levy. Uh, stay tuned for next week, and we will see you on the sidelines. Thanks for listening. Remember, the Inside Southwest Florida football podcast will be available for download every Wednesday at noon to get you ready for upcoming games. One, two, three. This is WWDHLP, 93.3 FM, operating in the Dunbar community of Fort Myers. WWDHLP, 93.3 FM, will be serving the Dunbar community of Fort Myers. You're listening to WWDH, 93.3 Fort Myers. As you start to make decisions and plans for what to do after high school, make sure to include Fort Myers Technical College. As one of your options, FMTC, they offer many of the top career paths in Southwest Florida. Plus, most of their programs take less than a year to complete. Go to www.fortmyerstech.edu and check out all the programs they offer. FMTC, real training, real people, real work. FMTC, a career in a year. Gigi's Meat and Groceries now have two locations to serve you in the Dunbar community. Gigi's is located at 3529 Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard. Gigi's is now open at 2190 Ford Street. Both stores specializes in meat bundle specials, money orders, bill pay services, Florida lottery tickets. Gigi's are serving customers seven days a week. Open Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Gigi's always offers high food from their kitchen, meats, produce, and beverages. Gigi's has been in the Dunbar Fort Myers community since 2014. And now you can enjoy two locations, 3529 Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard or 2190 Ford Street. Gigi's is a proud supporter of Dunbar High School and Dunbar High School Tiger Sports.
Good evening and uh, welcome to tonight's uh, Dunbar Tiger Contest here at Joe North Law Firm Stadium. Curtis Terry here with uh, two-time co-host Joe Clausing. Of the year. Just of the year. Yeah, uh, like this is this is something. I'm a seasoned professional. I was going to play Sweet Home Alabama uh, for Carl Falk. He was supposed to be here, unfortunately, uh, uh, with some family issues. He couldn't come. So thank you for stepping in. Uh, it was going to be a big night tonight. And, uh, you know, some top-tier talent on the field tonight from both sides, uh, both Bishop Rowe and Dunbar Tiger. So it should be a, a pretty good game. It was electric coming in here. Electric. Electric. Yeah. Just like the song says. I couldn't even get in the door. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you could, You know, they. the email said get here early, but uh, uh, I guess it's true. I mean, it looks like a uh, not a spot in the parking lot. There is not. They moved us up into the front, Ooh. and we had to huff it like peasants all the way down yeah, here. Yeah, we should have had a shuttle. Yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like coming into this game, you know, uh, Dunbar has not faced a uh, quarterback like we're going to face tonight and Carter Smith and he's uh, ranked number nine pocket passer in the country for the junior class and 193 in the ESPN 300. So. Well my 13 year old son told me about him today so he must be something pretty yeah, special. He's really good he's a three year starter so he started as a freshman. Um, you know last year I got a chance to watch him when we went and beat him over there but uh he is a special talent, and he has some stuff around him. But, you know, we have some talent as well. You know, uh, Tawaski Abrams, um, who is drawing a lot of other coverage, uh, so he doesn't have the numbers that, you know, some people think he should have. But he's opening the doors and the opportunities for the likes of Eric Fletcher, um, Hollywood DeMario Loggins. So, you know, there's a lot of um, speed out there in – that's one thing defenses do. If they, they try to take away, like, TJ, um, we have speed. If we have three wide receivers, we we match any – there's not a team maybe out in Miami that can match our speed. Well, I'm going to go back to your humble brag just a minute ago about how we beat them last year. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a good game. I mean, they started out um, – they scored on their first two possessions, and then uh, Dunbar's – defense clamped down and uh, the offense really turned it on um, and if you go back to two years ago um, it was a really slow start and it was a Saturday uh, game because I didn't go to a, I don't do Saturday games I'm sorry it's too like, old I well, understand no, I it's college football true so I I sort of have a religion on yes. Saturdays I can I can I concur so um, you know and they it was, I think they were beating us at half, and then we ended up, like, running clocking them. So um, it's one of those things where, you know, they talked about it in the news press, the podcast, where this is the the hurdle that Bishop Bro cannot get over, and they think that, you know, this will be the year. Because last year, you know, they beat um, Lehigh the week before they played us. So they're out for blood right now. Yeah, yeah, they're they're going to be ready to go. They've but got some. They want some revenge. They want to make their mark. Yeah, but I I think also you have to look at Dunbar from Dunbar's side. Is all they've been hearing off season is you know since Vero also went to the state semifinal game, how everybody thinks that they're the better team that they're going to go deeper in the playoffs that you know go to the state championship game this year. Uh, possibly win a state championship, blah, 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 blah. You know, when a team hears that, it's, you know, motivation. So even though you think you have the number, it's going to, you know. Push you. Yes. And not only that, did you see that picture circulating of our coach, the Tiger King? Yes. I was not going to bring it up because um, poor Sammy Brown, like, no, like, no. He's not a fan? I Well, let's just put it this way. Um, watching the show, um, yeah, not Sammy Brown. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I would have come up with, like, who was the, the lion tamer back in the day that got actually eaten? Oh, those people from Vegas. Yeah. Like, I would have, like, you yeah. know, used that character. That Coach Copeland is a real rascal. What's yeah. he got up his sleeve for the game I, tonight? I don't know. I, I I think I saw him carrying a box to his car. 
Box of tricks or what? No, stuff. I think he was fired. (laughs) 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 So um, (laughs) it's just one of those things where, you know, I think uh, coming to this game, the true test is going to be how, you know, Austin Price holds up against a a better defense than that we saw last week. Um, You know, it was not a good couldn't judge him on the first week because it was a brand new offensive line. You know, last week, I, unfortunately, I did not go because I had family obligations. So, um, but they scored on their first three drives. So it's one of those things where if that happens again tonight um, and he gets confidence, it could be a good thing. I think he's got the jitterbugs out of him. I think tonight it's going to be price and slice the air with that football. Yeah, I, th- I think we're going to, I mean, that's going to be the thing. I mean, they talked about big plays in the uh, podcast. And the one thing that Dunbar has versus other teams in this area is, you know, we talk about three facets of the game, offense, defense, special teams. They have the ability to score on all three facets. Whereas, you know, most teams in the area don't have that opportunity. You know, they'll score if they're lucky one time a season on special teams or maybe two or three times a, a season in defense. You know, if it's – if Dunbar doesn't score on defense, you know, at least every other game, it's it's something. I don't know. To quote that song that I like so much, I got a feeling <laughs> that tonight's going to be a good night. Yeah, I, I hope so. But I, I tell you what, uh, I probably won't be as chipper as I – have been and uh, you know I you know could be the officials that take my wrath I've been uh, fighting a cold all week well did you hear that joke about the officials no do you know what happened to the blind football player no he became a referee Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to be here all night folks I do like uh, Dunbar has the uh, alternate jersey so they're the black all black jerseys with neon Green numbers. I think they're wearing neon green because we go we go so fast. We yes, so fast. they might make the Vikings puke. All right, but uh, Vikings are going to be in there all white. So, captains like T.J. Abrams, uh, fifty-two tonight. It's going to be Veneer Baptiste as a uh, jersey number change, and then number eleven, Austin Price. First year quarterback. Yep, and then for the Vikings, number six, Jeremiah Dean, number sixteen, Timmy Lawson, and I can't see the other two because they're standing side by side. Well, there is electricity in the air. Cheerleaders are getting everyone psyched up. It's going to be a good game, and I think we're going to smile a lot. Look at Austin Price trying to, you know. Cut down on a couple penalties, shaking the ref's hands before the game, where everybody ran away. Well, yeah, future a, politician. No, no, it doesn't help us. You we never know. know. That. All right, the, I think the team's about getting ready to uh, run out. And uh, who's our our Mary Lou Retton of the team? I don't know, but where's the smoke? Usually we have the smoke bomb. A smoke bomb, and we have one of our players that does a triple step out layout. Yeah. Here comes the Vikings. They're skipping. Skipping. Hop, skip, hop, skip, and the jump. And you're Dunbar fighting Tigers. No, they're, they're waiting for the smoke bomb. I would, too. I mean, if you're going to make an entrance, make an entrance. You should just, Especially in I, the neon. I probably wouldn't be standing all around a pyrotechnic, though. Well, I mean, yeah. Maybe they should take a, a cue from that one. White Snake concert years ago. Here we go. I think we should just buy a smoke machine. You know, a lot of places we used to do the back, the past, they get the uh, fire extinguishers. <laughs> I've got a funny story about the birthday boy and a fire extinguisher. Oh uh, yeah. So you can you gonna give your uh, shout, shout out? Shout out to my brother Kurt Bor- Borselman on his sweet sweet 46th birthday. Speaking of which, I sent him a happy birthday, and then I said, oh, you know, you can, you know, 
live up your birthday by listening to your sister on the radio. And she goes, what? She's on the radio again? Like, I know. So how did she not plaster this all over social media? Well, I've, I've got a lot of fans. They've been begging for my return. And I I am not on the radio, not because Carl Falk couldn't make it, but because yeah, that's exactly I'm the what it was. on-air talent. And last time I was on the radio, it was not because Donnell couldn't make it. It was because of my sweet, sweet communications degree from the Ohio State well, University. Well, speaking of Columbus... Joe Addison listening from Columbus at a wedding. He's in paradise. Is he? In Buckeye country? Is he in paradise? We miss you, sunshine. It's more like a sewer. Um, no. Yeah, I've been there. Sewer of winds, if well, you're going to call it a I'm sewer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the actual town. Oh. It's, it's dump. It's the Mecca of the Midwest. Is it really? Yes. That's what they and call it. And is it really Midwest? Yes. Because it's right over the border. No, it's fine. Let's talk about our qualifications tonight to be on this radio. Um, I'm not sure if everyone knows that I used to be a cheerleader in high school, so that qualifies me. Does it? Yes. Also, I'm a football mom. That qualifies me. And I listen to my dad and my husband talk about their glory years. So, and your brother, and my brother, and uh, Dunbar and the is other going brother. to kick it away. It looks like we don't have a tee again tonight, so we're going to place the ball on the, the, keeping like, on the it ground. classy all the time. Like, this is is there a tee thief? I don't know, but this could be really good or really bad. You know what? I hope that doesn't give us a penalty. So the kick is away. It's going to be fielded oh, at the 35-yard line. <coughs> where well, I guess you can't get a return that way. True. So number 11, uh, who is McCray Thompson, covered it. And they'll start off at the 36-yard line. So out comes Carter Smith in the Vero offense. They're going right to left on your radio dial. Is Can Carter it, Smith, uh, is he declared any school to go to I yet? I don't believe he has yet. Uh, so we got uh, two receivers right, one to the left. Man in motion. Snap. It's going to be Carter Smith keeping it on the read option. He's going to be hit and tackled for a gain of about two on the play. And a cloud of dust. Oh, by the way, we do not have a clock. So we're going to guess. I do have my Fitbit on, though, so I can at least tell the time. It is 7.28, and I thought the game was supposed to start at 7.30, so yeah. we are early. <laughs> so it's going to be second in uh, the game three. <coughs> so second and seven. Going to go four ride, ride receivers this time. Man in motion again. Snap. It's going to be thrown out to the back. Who? Ooh, he fumbled a, it. Yeah, it was a backwards pass. That was a backwards pass. It reminds me of the other week. Forward progression. Yeah, progression. Well, that was, was a little no different. That was definitely a backwards pass, and he fumbled it. Um, now, granted, I don't. I think he was going to recover it anyway, but he probably would have lost about two yards. So it's going to be third and seven for Vero. They're going to go. Uh, Two receivers. No, nope, no, we're going to switch to a three receivers right, one receiver left. Center's got the ball. Car Smith shotgun snap. It's going to be thrown Fake. up uh, a hitch route, and it's going to be all oh, incomplete. Good defense there by number 21 for the Tigers, and that is Javaris Fletcher. You want to know what kind of shoes a center wears? What? Hiking shoes. Okay. You know what else? I think we're going to make the Vikings go hiking today. <laughs> so that was a low throw there by Carter Smith. Um, this is interesting. It looks like he's also the punter. So you got to watch for a fake here um, with him. And he's very athletic. So um, you got to be heads up uh, as a special teams. So good snap. The rugby style kick is away. It's an end over end kick. It's going to be... Let hit the bat, the ground, and Tawaski's going to watch it. It's going to roll inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line where Dunbar will take over. So they're listening tonight on uh, 
93.3 WWDH Tiger FM, and also 91.9 WMYE. Thanks, Rob Robbins. A uh, great friend of Rob Little. I think we're about to see some money moves with that green. I think it's money green. That's money green? Yep. So on is the Dunbar offense. We got uh, two receivers right, two receivers left. Tawaski Abrams is in the backfield with uh, Austin Price. Looking to the sideline. Snap, straight back to Pasco's Price. He's going he's to run it, it. Run he's gonna run through the, the middle. middle. And he's going to be tackled for no gain, maybe a loss of one. Ugh, he ran right into traffic. Yeah, I don't know if uh, he just got uh, pressure early and uh, just tucked it. Well, he's up against a big name, and it's got to kind of give you the butterflies maybe a little bit. Yeah. So uh, brings up second and uh, eleven. Going to go three receivers to the left this time, one receiver to the right. Tawaski Abrams in the backfield to the, switching to the left of Austin Price. Snaps going to be handed off to Tawaski, who's decapitated in the backfield. Like he was hit as soon as he, he's lucky he didn't fumble it. You know what they say when that happens, make creamed corn out of him. Well, uh, that means somebody missed a block up front. Well... <coughs> so loss of four on the play. I think that's the uh, old. Uh, the old one-two switch. I didn't switch. see who, who made the tackle. I think it was the linebacker on a little blitz. So it's snap to Price straight back to pass. He's going to look. He has a man outside. He's going to throw it. It's going to be oh. incomplete. Incomplete to number three, Eric Fletcher. I think he had uh, Loggins over the middle, too. He had his pick and... Uh, that was a tough, long throw. He tried, though. Yep. He gets an A for effort. So it's going to bring up fourth down and about 15 for the Tigers. Price is going to be in his own end zone to kick it. Back deep for the Vikings is number three, Ryan Gatson. It's time for some magic, a little abracadabra. Good snap. Kick is away. It's a nice high kick. The fair catch is called by uh, Gadsden, and it'll take it to 40. So it's a good, good punt there by uh, Price. So he's quite the multi-talent. Yeah, about 35 yarder. So I mean, didn't quite uh, get it onto the Vikings territory, but it was pretty close. Mm -hmm. We'll take it. So the Vikings starting in plus territory at the Dunbar 40 yard line. So we got uh, three receivers to the right, one receiver left. They haven't handed it off to Jenkins yet. I think it's about time. Snap's going to be handed off to Jenkins. He's off the left side. He makes a man he's miss through. in the hole, and he's going to have about eight, maybe nine. There was some movement there, but it was a pretty good seven-layer salad of a tackle. Yeah, and then they're going quick. Snap, handed off to Jenkins again off the right side. He's in the secondary. Whoa, that's a He's going to run over a guy. He's going to tackle inside the 10 down to the 5. He is a big boy to be moving yeah, pretty he, quickly. And uh, they go really, really fast tempo. Snap, hand off to Jenkins again. This time he's going to be hit in the backfield and tackled for no gain. So it'll be second and goal. Going to go back to my cheerleader years and say a little H O L D, hold that line. Yeah, we could use a hold on them, maybe back them up here. So, second down and goal from the four yard line. Got uh, one receiver right, one receiver left. Man in motion. Snap. Carter Smith's going to hold it off right the left side. He's in the end zone touchdown. There was a gap the size of Texas that he ran through. Yeah, they do a really good job with their, their pace of play. like Very like, fast. Yeah. Like so, super fast. Um, like new shoes on a grade school are fast. Uh, something's going on down here. I don't know. They're going for that. So there's a little, is it the swinging gate or they can actually go for two? I'm 
So they're like fans yelling up at coaches. Like I said, it's like, electric. Just yeah, but like snap. It's, the kick is up, and it good. is wow. That's a really good kick. That's good. So the score is seven zero. Vikings with a toe. So Smith on a four yard TD run. I, hope and this I have no idea how much time's left. So it's, uh, if you just listen, it's uh, seven zero. Uh, Vikings probably midway, close to midway through the first quarter. So yeah, I mean, uh, I this think is sort of how they started last year too. I like it. They're more of a second half team. Well, um, sometimes it takes you could watch film, but until you actually see what's how the, they're trying to attack you, you can't really make adjustments. So I'm curious to see here, though, like, is he going to kick it deep? I mean, I highly doubt it. Well, we shall see. Back deep is Fletcher. I don't, even, I don't see Tawaski out there. No, I want to tell him to get set and get ready. Yeah, Tawaski's still on the side. He's on the sideline. So probably keeping him just for running. Keeping him fresh. Yeah, keep him. And uh, the non-wind blows the ball. I guess there's a little wind, not much. Looks like they have a tee now. Well, they have a tee. <laughs> we don't have a tee. Our tee's out drinking penalty. Yeah, oval tee. <laughs> so it's a little squib kick, and oh, it's going right. to be fumbled and recovered by Dunbar, I believe. Yes. So it was a diving attempt there by uh, 44, uh, Logan Gardella, which was a, a great play because it saved Dunbar probably t at least 10 yards. <coughs> he dove in, and recovered it at the 41-yard line. So good field position for Dunbar. Let's see if they can uh, make something of it here. I'd like to see maybe a little swing pass here to Tawaski or something like that. I'd like the receiver to say to the football, catch you later. Yeah, that would be nice. Three receivers right, one receiver left. Snap. He's going to throw it out, a slant route, and it's almost, almost intercepted. intercepted. So number 12, uh, that Parker Turner undercut it. So that brings up second and 10. And they, I think they had uh, uh, Singleton here in the in the slot. Like I think he was open, like for a little wide receiver screen. Slow snap. Oh. It's going to be handed off to Tawaski, and he's got nothing again. Just went right into traffic. I mean, number six was there. Um, they're just they're like putting duct tape over those holes. So this is exactly what happened early in the game when we played, you know, uh, Port Charlotte, Charlotte and then Charlotte, you know. <coughs> then the offensive line made some adjustments. So we've got three receivers right, one receiver left. Tawaski in the backfield. Snap. Oh, so oh he snap. fumbled it. He's going to roll to his right, and he's going to throw it. It's going to be completed short of the first down, but it's going to be close. Way to recover. So it's going to be fourth and about... Long two. So yeah, he made uh, chicken salad out of oh. chicken poop. Well, that's true. I was getting a little nervous. I was about to tell. But there's a flag, so uh, maybe a legal, legal man downfield. Is it because of that fumble? Yeah. Usually when he really scramble. I tell you what, you want to know which insect doesn't play well. Oh, in personal foul roughing the passer, so Dunbar will get 15 yards added to the end. And they move the ball. Like, what's the guy doing? They're just taking a stroll so downfield. Remember, it was from the 48 was yes. where the ball was. No, no, it's from the end of the play. It's from the end of the play. It's all because of that fumble, B. It's. It's 15 yards at the end of the play. They need their laminated book again. 
Oh my gosh. We, at least we got a first down, but that was. Come on, man. They're set. Snap straight. Uh, he's going to keep it, go off the left side. He's going to have about a yard and oh. then rip down by number 75. 75. Jack Benitez. So gain of about a yard on the play. Which brings up second and nine. I think they're going to have to, like, real just get the ball out quick. Like, get it in our playmaker's hands quick. You know, pitch it to Twosky, let him get on the outside. You think quick? Because they're used to playing quick. I think they need to slow it down. No, 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 I'm talking about getting it on the perimeter. Oh. So, snap. It's going to be handed off to Twosky. Oh, there he goes. Speed. Make a man miss. He's Speed, the 40, McGillicuddy. The 35, the 30, there he 25, goes. 25, and knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line. But what a run there by Twosky at nothing. Stiff arm to do, then broke a tackle. And then down the sideline. TJ Abrams for the W. So that was a gain of about. Uh, 20. Yeah, because I forget where the. I think it was about 20. I wish I could tell you how much time we had left on the <laughs> clock, but it is 742. Yeah, no clue. Still in the first quarter. And we are about, what? 15 yards from a TD? 20. Close enough. So there's those numbers? On the <laughs> she did go to Ohio State, so that just answers. I'm a reading so teacher. So throws out to the left, completed to Chris Singleton. He's on the left side. He's going to be ripped out and tackled out of bounds. With a gain of about four yards. About eight, but. Four. Eight. We shall see. Uh, so he went from the 20, and he's down to the 12. Hmm. Whose mother I'll was a math it. teacher? Yours. Okay. Truth. But if he ever needs to go to the hospital, my mom was a nurse. Okay. Don't think I can do anything, but I could call my mom. Good to know. So we got uh, three receivers right, one to the left. Price in the shotgun with Twosky to his right. Snap. It's going to be Price keeping up. Money He's moves. Make a go. Man miss. Here he, he goes. The first down and then pounded. Ooh. Ooh, he got his bell rung on that one. No, actually, the other kid, because, look, he tackled with his helmet. Well, that someone like, got their bell rung. So. A cowbell. See, look, he's, he's dazed. Throw it at him. So it's first and goal inside the 10 down to the 6-yard line. It's time for a little Abra Abra Cadabra Dunbar. So shotgun, we've got two receivers right, two left. Snap, hand it off to Tawaski. He's off the right side. He He's going to make a man miss. He's at the five. He's and touched. touchdown. Yes, he touched down. Shoots and ladders. What a block by uh, Eric Fletcher. Eric Fletcher sealed that side, but, I mean, it was the pure speed of Tawaski. Pure speed. Just outran everybody. That's what we like to see, and yep. that's what we are known for. Just run it off tackle. That's, yep. Wheels McGillicuddy. So that puts the score at 7-6. Seven, seven, six. <coughs> looks like they are, looks like they're going for the kick. Yep. We got, is that Price with the toe? Yep. And on the hold is uh, number 12, Gary and Burr. Kick is up and it good. is. That's good. No good. What? <clears throat> He's standing right underneath it. No, that looked good to me. But it was no good, apparently. Yep, so the score is 7 6 with no idea left to go in the first quarter. Well. But good answer by the Tigers. Could have answered. They could have got a little extra credit, though. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, now let's see what the defense does. Like, I'm like looking at like some of the people that are down on the sideline. I'm like, I've never seen you. I've never seen you. <laughs> oh, I, I think I see former um, Dunbar High assistant principal Matt Miller I do. down I, there. I, his son needs a haircut. So does mine. It's a really bad excuse for a mullet. Oh, there he is, Mr. Miller. 
All right, lining up. Vikings with seven. Tigers with six. Anyone's <laughs> game. What's Sammy doing? Sammy out having a powwow. Why'd the football coach go to the bank? To get his quarterback. I hope not, because then we're really cheap. Just take a joke, pterodactyl. It's joke time. Okay. We got to fill the dead air. Oh, we got a T. See? We got a T. Done drinking penalty. So, price to kick it away. Kick is a squib kick. Oh, this is ridiculous. ridiculous. Look at this. He was 16. Oh, when, oh, they were on his shoulders. So, so Price kicked off in 16. This is, that guy should be ejected from the game. Immediately went and swung the quarterback down. That would we'll be Timmy Lawson. He should Lawson. be ejected. He should be ejected. Timmy, that was not very nice. Like, that is, if that is not the worst sportsmanship. He was on his shoulders, like straight Here up. Here it comes. His shoulders. They gonna throw some laundry on that field? What? A kick. They call, so Dunbar was offsides. They're going to have to re-kick it. And let's see if this guy does it again. Look at their coach out there complaining to him. Like, you're classless. You are a classless coach if you're going to tell a kid to do that. You are classless. Get on your sideline. Call yourself Catholics. <laughs> well, I'm a Lutheran, so I can't. Well, I'm just saying. They call themselves Catholic. They're fake Catholics. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, you're arguing about them trying to hurt. Because that's all they're trying to do. You think so? Ruff, rough the punter. That's terrible. Because that's the quarterback. Like, what if we would do that to, you know, Carter Smith's or punter? What if we would hit him? Their coach would go ballistic. So would his mom. I would hope so, because mm. we don't play that way. I tell you what. Right now, I can tell you who the happiest people at this football game are. The cheerleaders. <laughs> so on to kick it away at a price again. It's going to be a high kick. It's going to be fielded inside the 10. He's going to return it right up the middle. Oh, Has a seam. right down he the middle. He has the 35 and wrestled down nicely by Number. Cam Rivera. Oh. These numbers and are kind of hard to tell. And somebody's down on the field. And it looks like the kid that hit the quarterback and got the, the roughing call. Well, so, karma. Yeah, it is. I hate to say it. But we'll be back here after commercial break. Uh, Dunbar Trail, 7-6. To make decisions and plans for what to do after high school, make sure to include Fort Myers Technical College as one of your options. FMTC, they offer many of the top career paths in Southwest Florida. Plus, most of their programs take less than a year to complete. Go to www.fortmyerstech.edu and check out all the programs they offer. FMTC, real training, real people, real work. FMTC, a career in a year. Welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm Stadium, where uh, Coach Donnell is also listening in. Donnell, um, no, I will not stop the jokes. You've just given me more ammunition. So, uh, player, we can't see the numbers still on the, the field. You hate to see a, an injury. That's, you know, the thing that we were talking about, like with trying to rough up the, kick, the kicker who's the quarterback. Like, you just don't do it. And, you know... And you don't like to believe in karma, but I mean, it's like. Oh, well, they're teenagers. They don't. Their brains no, aren't I mean, developed and yet. That's the truth, but you know, I go back to like the coaches out there arguing about it. Like, it's a rule. You can't rough the kicker. Like, if it's like in the play of the game, but you can't rough the kicker. You can't. And, and they called it, and 
it should be in that rule. You don't rough the kicker just like you don't kiss your sister. Yeah, or hit the long snapper. True. Now tell me again what a long snapper does. He's the guy that is the center that snaps it to the punter or the place kicker. Okay, the center that is wearing the hiking shoes. No, they they don't really they snap the ball. Like cuz they Well, they say hut, long, hut, hike. They, it's called a long snap because it goes a long distance. But they say hut hut hike. And they actually get um, scholarships now. Really? Yeah. Like you can like if I had a like uh, a son that was you know like decent size and decent athletic ability but not like good enough to go anywhere you send them to long snapper camp and he can go somewhere i mean if you look at the the long snappers in the nfl like the one dude for the eagles was on america's got talent because he was a magician was he really that good at football he obviously performed magic on the field so and there's still time so There's it's still time for you to get a son that was not of total size. It's number 16, which is uh, not uh, it's a senior. Don't want to see it, and he can't put any uh, weight on it. So we're not going to – we obviously aren't doctors or nurses, so we're not going to speculate on injuries. But we do have a, uh, t- a score update. 7-3 to three, Mooney, four left in the second. Who was Mooney playing? Uh, ECS. Yes, that's right. So we got uh, three receivers right, one to the receiver left, Carter Smith in the shotgun. Snap is going to be handed off to Jenkins up the middle, and he's going to be hit and tackled by Hezekiah Jones. Now my concern is we keep (coughs) – I see these giant holes in our line that need to be patched up. Yeah, but they filled it that time. He just broke a tackle. He did do a good job filling it. Hezekiah did a good job with the tackle. So snap, hand to Jenkins off the right side. He's going to be close to the first down. It's going to be about third and one. So good. Ju- they, and they go fast. They're lightning. Quick. Like I said. So we've got uh, three receivers uh, to the right, or two to the left, one to the right. Snap. It's going to be Heron off to Jenkins again. He's going to be up the middle. He's going to half the first down in about a yard more. So they're just going to feed the beast right now until Dunbar can stop that. I mean, he's a big guy. He's coming off, though. He's going to be a new tailback. Lined up, and I'm ready for something special. Number 11 is uh, McCray Thompson is the new tailback. It's going to be timeout Dunbar. I would like to do a dramatic read of all the names on the teams. Um, maybe you can do that, like, the day before for Rob and can record it. That would be a good idea. So good time out here by Dunbar. I mean, uh, just a lot. Like everybody thought they were going to come out and just throw the ball around, and uh, they've been running the ball down Dunbar's throat. So uh, haven't really got anything in the passing game yet. We haven't had a lot. Of, there hadn't. There hasn't been a lot of penalty calls yet. Just a couple. Yeah, let's not. Let's not let's, jinx. I was going to say. I'm going to I'm going to say that with a wink. Yeah. And a little knock on this wood. So uh, going to go three receivers left, one to the right. Man in motion is number 18. Snap. It's going to be pitched out. No, Carter Smith keeps it, goes up the middle, and he's going to have nothing. No gain on the play for Carter Smith. Fake the pitch out to uh, Thompson, and I uh, thought he saw something up the middle, and Veneer Baptiste said, no soup for you. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to my girl Robin on the eve of her 40th birthday. She's listening in. Is it like Robin Don? No. Oh, okay. Robin. Okay. Gomez Rock and Robin. Barsan. Yeah. Uh, so the- three receivers left. Snap. It's going to be handled. Oh, it's going to be. Uh, throws a uh, slant pass. Uh, that was a good pass. Yeah. Brought down. Oh, and but there's a flag on a play. It's going to be a uh, sideline warning. Who took him down? I think it was the trainer. <laughs> the trainer got the sideline warning, but I tell you what, a really good read there by Carter Smith. Uh, he faked the um, handoff to Thompson and then threw a nice uh, sw- little slant behind it. 
little sneaky little move there. Yep. So is that what they call a quarterback sneak? No, it's called a quarterback read option. So it's their oh. option to either hand the ball off or throw it. That's so, not a very fun name. So snaps to – it's going to be handed off to Jenkins off the right side. He's going to be hit and tackled for a gain of about one. Who was the stop on that play? Uh, I'm trying to see. But uh, the teams are playing to the echo of the whistle right now. It's very poetic of you. There's going to be some uh, personal foul calls here pretty soon. Uh, so brings up second and uh, call it nine. Three receivers left, one to the right. Snap, it's going to be pitched out to jo Jenkins off the right. He There's makes a that. man miss. He's going to be in the secondary inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line for another first down. That's what I'm worried about. There was a giant hole there. Well, that time he pitched it on the outside, and I think he brought the inside pressure, and there was nobody on the outside then. So snap, it's going to be handed off to Jenkins up the middle this time, and this time he has nothing. Almost so, fumbled it. He did. Seven-layer salad out there. So they're going to give him a gain of two on the play. Interesting. Definitely did not seem like that. So second and eight from the Dunbar 16-yard line. I'm going to have to say D-E-F-E-N-S-E, -E -E, defense, Tigers defense. So man in motion. Two receivers to the right, two left. Jenkins in the backfield now. Jet sweep motion. It's going to be Carter Smith keeping off the left side. He's going to be inside the 15 down to the... 11 yard line. It's going to be third and about, oh, what is it, about three? Two and a half. Okay, two and a half. So this quarter seems like it's lasting forever. You never know when you don't have a scoreboard, but we did get an offer of a scoreboard from Perrysburg, Ohio. Oh, really? Yes. So we got a two receivers right, two to the left. Carter Smith in the shotgun. Man in motion. Snap is going to be pitched out to number 10. He's off the right side. He's going to be inside the 10 to the 5 and knocked down to the 2-yard line. Another hole. So they're, no, they're just switching up. They're running inside, and then they're running outside. You know, they're just doing a really good job with their play calling. Going quick again. First and goal from the 2. Snap is going to be handed off. At, nope, Smith keeps it off the right side or left Ooh. side. He's going to be hammered, fumbles into the end zone, but recovered for a touchdown so he took it like a champ yeah I don't know who came up I think it was uh, Kelby came up and laid the wood to him and he fumbled it but how convenient that they're there to recover it's going to make the score 13 to 6, six. this is a fast I mean like the, we, how are we not in the second quarter I don't know. Like, it's not like we, like we've been running, both teams have been running the ball. And BV is really moving fast. Do you think that's, that's getting to the Tigers? I think it, it does. Flag so, on the play. Flag, yep. Or as I like to say, there's some laundry Illegal on the field. Illegal substitution. On who? Uh, the, the Vikings. The Vikings. So they had too many men on the field. They can't count over at row to 12. Well, up to 11. They, they just sent that one Viking hiking. So move it back five yards. This kid has a huge leg, so it's not like it's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. So on to attempt the extra point is number three, Ryan Gadsden. The kick is up, and it is. I think it looks no good. Good. My eyes are betraying me tonight. <laughs> So the score is 14 to 6. So, like, how is it still the first quarter? That's my question. I mean. I think the referees are just feeling it in their souls. But, you know, Dunbar's defense has to show up because the <coughs> we thought we'd see a heavy dose of passing. It's been just pounding ground here so far. I told LeVar Singleton not to humiliate me. So he's going to need to step up his game. Yeah, so. I said that. To you, Varface. Okay. Lining up. And uh, Gats is going to kick it away. 
see if he does that little uh, squib kick. Is it a squid or a squib? Squib. Did you just make that up, or is that a real term? Google it. All right. I would probably want to call it a squibble or something. Sounds a little more fun. So Gatson's going to kick it away. It's going to be a high... Squibble. It doesn't even go 10 yards, so it's... What? Squibble, scribble. So it didn't even go 10 yards, so Dunbar didn't have to touch it, so... I'm trying to see. So it's Dunbar's ball. So Dunbar gets. So the the kick went four yards. That's it. That's it. Well, four I'm yards. Just, I'm learning that a squib kick is a tactic used to prevent a long return. And boy, oh, you thought I was making it up. Well, I'm educating our listeners. Mm -hmm. All 17 of our fans want to know. 18. Maybe we're up to 27 now. Maybe. So we got uh, two backs of the backfield this time. We got two receivers right, one to the left. Snap. It's going to be handed off up the middle. Goes. I couldn't see who that was. The and Singleton, I didn't maybe? either. I was still reading about a squib kick. The singleton. Yep, Singleton up the middle for a gain of about two. Lavaris or Chris? Chris. So it goes second down and two. Uh, sorry, second down and eight for Dunbar. With no idea left to go in the first quarter, and the score is 14-6 to six for Rowe. I'm going to send them some some vibes. You can do it. Snap, straight back to Pascal's Price. He's looked to the left. He's going to throw it over the head of Tawaski, who was covered nicely. But uh, Loggins Hollywood was wide open. They blew the coverage. And nobody went with them, but I, I don't think it was the play call. So, I mean, it's hard when you, you know, your, your read is this first. And he was covered pretty nicely to, in high school to move through your progressions. Now, what, what year is Hollywood? Is he a he's junior? A, no, he's a sophomore. Or he's a junior, I believe. Yeah, yeah he's junior, a junior. Yeah. So, Shotgun, we got three receivers right, to the, to, one to the left, so rolling to his right. Go, move it forward, right. forward. He's going to throw it, has Fletcher, he's going to be completed. Oh, and he's nice going to have the spin. first down and more. Fletcher just do -si doed that Viking partner, <laughs> spun it around for a couple extra yards. So great job there by Price, who got hammered by 55, but it was a clean hit. And we got some movement. Uh, Falk listening in. <laughs> Carl Falk, yeah. I am not on the radio tonight because you couldn't make it. It's yes, because are. of all of my on-air talent and so all of my knowledge. Three, re three receivers left and one to the right. Got Tawaski in the backfield with Price to his left. Snap. He's going to pitch it out to Tawaski. He's off the left side. Speed. He's going to have five, maybe oh, eight that's... yards and knocked out of bounds. Give him about nine. So good job there. Like a, they did so the receivers out there, like double team locked out there. That's what the, the receiver said to the football. So I like the little pitch to get it in his hands because he's going to outrun the or the. The they took defensive their, end. What I liked was that they took their time to set it up. It was clean. It was solid. And I think I sound exactly like Kirk Herb Street right now. Yeah, that doesn't sound like that's not much. So <laughs> He's a Buckeye. Yeah, I know. That's that's what I'm saying. So three receivers right, a one to the left. with Oh, false start. Oh, that's going to be huge. They're going to move his back, what, five? Five, yep. So it goes from second and one to uh, second and six. So, left tackle at that time. Okay, I hope this is giving them some uh, ammunition to do better. Yeah, I can't see the, the big kid out there, the left tackle. Can't see, see who it is. Left tackle? Yeah. Is it 12? No, it's like 70-something. So, shotgun formation to snap. As Price is going to get hit, and he's going to be tackled for a loss of about, about two. two. Yep. So, yeah, it was a bit, another bad snap, and it just, when he, that happens, it just messes the timing of the play. I think the center doesn't get off right. 
you know, uh, it's just, yeah, it just messes everything up. But And the center has to be the mental manager of the team. Yes, I mean, you got to remember this is his third varsity football game. <laughs> well, again, he still needs to be the mental manager, yeah. so he needs to get his brain straight, get the jitters mm -hmm. out. So we've got two receivers right, two left, straight back to pass goes Price. He's looking. He's rolling to his right. And he needs he's rolling, to make a rolling, move. Rolling. Now Wrong he's going to reverse his field, and he's going to look. He's going to make a man miss, and now he's going to be sacked. So. You know what my dad always says. Move north. Huh? In football. It's a north and south game. I understand that, east but and west. if he was going north, he would be going that way. Okay, well, so he wouldn't be going south this time. <laughs> we don't care about pesky little things like actual directions. Uh -uh. So it's going to be a loss of about 10 on the play. And the endless first quarter finally comes to an end. They had no water break, by the way, which is unusual. So we'll be back here at Dunbar trailing uh, 14 to 6. That, that number's going to change. GG's Meat and Groceries now have two locations to serve you in the Dunbar community. GG's is located at 3529 Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard. GG's is now open at 2190 Ford Street. Both stores specializes in meat bundle specials, money orders, bill pay services, Florida lottery tickets. GG's are serving customers seven days a week. Open Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. GG's always offers hot food from their kitchen, meats, produce, and beverages. Gigi's has been in the Dunbar Fort Myers community since 2014. And now you can enjoy two locations, 3529 Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard or 2190 Ford Street. Gigi's is a proud supporter of Dunbar High School and Dunbar High School Tiger Sports. Welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm Stadium where Dunbar trails 14 to six. You're listening to 93.3 WWDH Tiger FM and WMYE 91.9. So Dunbar has it fourth and we're gonna call it 17. So you, you think back to that false start, right? It was second and one. And now the penalty, we're... then the bad snap, and then the sack. Didn't so, put us in the best position. No. We've so. got pterodactyl on the mic. Yeah. And Godzilla just, on the other mic. I don't know what you do here. Like, maybe screen pass to Tawaski. I don't know. Three receivers left, one to the right. Snap straight back to Pasco's Price. He's looking. He's going to tuck it. He's going to be hit and sacked again. Once again, should have been maybe a l roughing the passer again. 71 just dove in, on top of him. They're a pretty dirty team for being Catholics. Well, they just, did you see that big chop number zero Deshaun Jenkins just did? No. It's pretty cocky. So, I mean, the thing is, like, the, you can see the receivers are getting frustrated, but like, Price is having zero time to throw the ball. Like, it's snapped, and he's literally – they got to get the ball out quicker. That's the bottom line. They need to get it out to the perimeter like they did in that series where they scored. Snap straight back to Prescott's uh, Smith. He's going to throw it to the left. Oh, beautiful play out there. Finally. Who's that? Uh, trying to see the number. Oh, Anel Mark making a nice open field tackle for a loss of two. I'm going to give him a shout out. He's in my class. I like to call him Markleberry Crunch. So we've got uh, three receivers to the right. Jenkins in the backfield. It's going to be uh, option play. Uh, he's going to pitch oh, it late, oh, and it's going to be a nice pitch, and it's going to be a good gain here of about seven. So back on schedule, they're going to have it about uh, third and five. So... It's a late pitch by Smith. Not gonna lie, they got some slick moves. Yeah, you don't see the option much anymore, so it's it's tough to defend if you don't. They did a really good job, you know, take the quarterback first, but they didn't have anybody for the pitch man. So that brings up uh, 
Third and five from the Dunbar 45 yard line. Going left to right on your radio dial. Got three receivers left, one to the right. Man in motion. Snap, it's gonna be Smith looking out. He's gonna have Ooh, Jenkins August. in the backfield. He's gonna be completed, but it's going to be tackled for a loss of one. Good job there by Jalen Christmas. That was a rough catch too. A lot of talking going on. So there's gonna be some unsportsmanlike conduct penalties called here pretty soon. So it brings up uh, fourth and, oh, they gave him no gain on the play. So fourth and five. So it looks like they're gonna keep the offense on the field. We got a lot of cheering. So, gonna go two receivers to the right, one to the left. Smith in the shotgun. Oh, and they jump off sides. Ah. So that gets the first down. Remember that. I think this team may be getting a little overheated. They're getting closer to the fans. It's going to be fourth and, fourth and a half yard. So not quite, a, but I mean, this is fourth and a half yard. They've been running. They haven't been able to stop them negative yards yet. Snap, it's going to be uh, Carter Smith another. keeping it off left side. Oh, he's in the open field. He's gone. Touchdown. So that's uh, 50 yards. That was a uh, so, that was a trick move again. No, it was just like, like you said. I mean, not. They have some slick moves. That but, was a fake handoff. So it makes the score 20 to 6. So that's his third touchdown on the, the, the night. Carter Smith. Yep. He so must. now Dunbar is off. I mean, you got to remember we get the ball to start the second half. So if you can get some momentum going here, going in the second half, like you said, typically Dunbar is the second half team. So that's when the magic happens. So good snap. The kick is up, and it is looks good. Good. There you go. You got that Finally one. Finally got one. So it makes the score 21 to six with no idea how long in the first half. But like I said, remember that uh, that offsides because it goes from fourth and you know five to Ten. fourth and inches, and now you brought everybody up. They didn't have safety help, so as soon as he broke, you know, the line of scrimmage, they had nobody. Penalties can make or break a game. Yep, and that's the second pre-snap penalty that was huge for Dunbar. Go back to the second one on the offensive side, the, the false start. Then you go there, fourth and five. And uh, it's just, you know, I you're amped up, but you gotta keep your head. I hope they keep this momentum up, their spirits up. You know what they think they need to do? Maybe hire a little ghost, get a little spirit in the team. Yeah. There's a show a show about that. There is? I don't know. There's always ghost shows, so. That was a pretty good joke, though. Was it? Yeah. Get a little spirit in the team. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about spirit like liquor. <laughs> no, no. This is this is a children's show. Yeah. But. So the kick is a line drive kick. It's going to be in the end zone for a touchback. Well, I did. Look at, like, seriously, dude. Like, look at him. We know it wasn't I've never seen a kicker like look over at taunt. Like um, Especially after those squib kicks. Yeah, right. <laughs> Especially after the last one went four yards. Now I did learn about a a pooch kick also. Do you know what that is? A pooch kick? It's more of a longer one when you try and get it to like the 20 yard line, 20, <laughs> 25 yard line. Yeah, the question was, who's the guy in the purple? He's the play clock guy since we don't have a clock. Oh, oh we. So snap straight back to pass because Price, he looks it out to his right and he's got a completed pass to Cam Rivera who's gonna be close to a first down and he's gonna have it. So good job there, just get like, just get it out of your hands quick. Just get it out of your hands quick. I'm still impressed we have a human time clock. 
that brings up uh, first and 10 for Dunbar at the 31, our own 31 yard line. We've got three receivers to the left, one to the right. Let's see who the tailback is. It's still Tawaski. Nope, Tawaski's out, so it's Chris Singleton back in the tailback. So Tawaski's wide open. Just throw it to him. I was going to throw it out to Cameron Vera to the left. Go faster. There's a hole. Keep 15, going. Keep 20, going. 25 and tackle. Keep going. For a gain of about 28 20. yards. <coughs> so I'm Who glad that? that worked because they blitzed from Tawaski's side and there was nobody over there. That was Fletcher, correct? No, that was uh, Cam Rivera. Okay. So, who member also got the unsportsmanlike yes. conduct before the play even started a couple oh, weeks ago. Oh, yes, I remember that. So we got uh, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Snap is going to be handed off to Singleton up the middle, and he's going to be tackled for a gain of about one. I like I like this, though, you know, Hudge keeping it honest with the ground game. You could be hard. A lot of times people just want to do away with it, but by doing that, it brings the linebackers up. Hopefully and, uh, opens it up a little bit. In the our second. linebackers have some talent. Their linebackers come up. Well, <laughs> I know, but our linebackers yes. still have yes. talent. Yeah, so straight back to Pascal Price. Looking at the left, throws the Ooh, little good. hitch route Ooh. to Fletcher, who's close to the first down. With a wonderful catch. And it looks like he has it, so gain of, uh, we're going to give him about 10 like throwing candy to a baby. That was a good good job there by Price, but because he had to clear the inside defender um, to throw that. It was a good route combination. Chris Singleton came out here, and then the defender had to come out and he just ran a little curl underneath it. Yes, what you said. Snap's going to be handed off to Singleton, who's hit immediately in the backfield. And fumbles, and no. Nope. They're calling him down. Calling them down. It was a fumble B move. I don't know if he's. they called him down or if their guy's knee was down. It looks like it's second down, so loss of one. So Singleton got hit immediately, and it's that A-gap blitz there, Falk, that is getting us. Right up the middle. Yep. So brings up second and 11, so Dunbar dodges a bullet there. Because usually we do not get those calls. <laughs> it was our turn. So, second down and 10. We got two receivers left, two to the right. And new back in the backfield. Can't see who it is. Snap is going to be handed off off the left side to the new tailback. It's going to have two yards back to the original line of scrimmage. Right up the middle uh, again. Number 17, Javarin, uh, Javirin Singleton. I think it's. Uh, Are they related to Lavaris? Yeah, so it's his brother, I believe. Is he a sophomore? Yes. So it brings up a big uh, third and ten for Dunbar. We got two receivers left, two to the right. Price looking to the sideline, changing the play is Hudge. Old Hudgy Bear. Coach Hudgy Bear. Snap, low snap. He's going to look oh, to the left, throws throw it. it, has a man open, completed to Fletcher, Fletcher. who has the first he's down going. and more. He's inside the 20 down to the 15, 14 yard line. We're in the zone. So, I mean, this is what they have to do, though. They just get the ball in these ki these guys' hands. like And let them quick. run. Yeah, like. Like a racehorse. They're giving them 20 yards of cushion like because they know that they're just going to run by them because they're slow and we're not. Oh, that one, that one kid on on Vero's team that big kid he was pretty quick yeah I was impressed yeah. not as fast as our guys right. but so we got three receivers right one left snap low snap again and Ooh, they brought it's gonna him be down. hit and yeah I mean every time it hits the ground it's just like you just pray he doesn't get hurt mm -hmm. I mean who's our mental prices. manager Price has taken a beating. He is. Who's our mental manager at center? That would be. Um, I'm looking. Where is our center? 
Uh, we have a new one now, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, got three receivers right, one to the left. Good snap, throw out Draw. to the right, completed to Loggins. He's going to be off the right side. He's going to be have uh, five, maybe six yards. So gets the sack yardage back in the, an additional one or two. He is so quick. It's like there wasn't much there, and he just turned to the sideline, well, not north and south. He went east and west to get a little extra. He did. Well, with a name like Loggins, and he, Kenny he Loggins. Goes, and he goes by Hollywood. And he's fast. He's very fast. Like a like jet on top gun. Coach Joe's it, very excited to have him here. So <laughs> uh, got two receivers right, two to the left. One tailback. Singleton in the tailback. Snap, straight back to Pascal's Price. He's looking to his right throws, and it is overthrown. So That could have been thrown into the wrong hands. Yeah, that was well, a once too again, he, got, he got hit as soon as he released it. So, um, you know, just bringing that pressure. I'm going to give some shout outs to uh, the people living, listening way up north, up in Michigan. Oh. Scary land. Who do you know in Michigan? Well, her name is Jennifer Boffman. Oh. Shout out to you, Jennifer Boffman. And we also have our uh, loyal listener, Mary from Kentucky. Mary from Kentucky. And again, I have a Robin from Trinidad on the eve of her 40th birthday listening. She is in Trinidad listening? No, but she's oh. from Trinidad. Okay, because I'm like, if she's in Trinidad, that's awesome. Impressive. I've been there. I love Trinidad. Well, you would. There, she's a Trinidadian. Okay, well, let's go to a commercial break. There's a timeout. We'll be back here, 93.3 WWTH, Tiger FM, and WNYE 91.9. As you start to make decisions and plans for what to do after high school, make sure to include Fort Myers Technical College as one of your options. FMTC, they offer many of the top career paths in Southwest Florida. Plus, most of their programs take less than a year to complete. Go to www.fortmyerstech.edu and check out all the programs they offer. FMTC, real training, real people, real work. FMTC, a career in a year. Welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm Stadium where the Tigers trail 21-6 and have a big fourth and nine at the Vero, uh, we'll call it what, the 14-yard line. So they have to get down to the five or inside the five for first down. We're in the W zone. I'm ready for a win. W. Oh. For a win. Because it's usually called the red zone. I know, but can I, I'll call it the scarlet zone. So we're going to go empty backfield this time with Price. So no tailbacks. We got two receivers to the right, three receivers to the left. Snap to Price. He's looking. He's looking over the middle. Has a man. It's Touchdown, Yoxie! Hollywood! Loggins! And ladders. <coughs> what a dart by Price. That was a missile. But you, here's the thing. You have to give the line a lot of credit because that route took a while, and he had all day. That was a missile. Yeah, all day to see it. They're going to have to go for two. Well, they don't have to, but I'm sure they're going to go for two here. Yeah, I mean, if they'd go for three, if they could. Um, the XFL did that. You, you could, could go, go for three? You could go for two, three, or five, I believe. It was like, so if you took it from like the regular, it was two. If you took it from the five, it was three. And if you took it from the ten, yeah, it was interesting. Well, I've learned as a Pop Warner football mom that kicks are worth two points. Oh. So we got a stack set trip to the right. Snap, looking out to the right is Price. He's going to throw it in the go. end zone. He's and going. It's completed to Cam Rivera All right. for a two-point conversion to make the score 21-14 with no idea left. We got to be getting close to the half. Yeah, I, I mean, you would think. Ask the, where'd the do it in the purple go? Where's our human score? So he's just the play clock. So he just does the, the play clock. Can he throw up hand signals for scores well, and such, Well, there's too? a different guy that does the actual time clock. I don't see where he is. He's <laughs> wearing a black shirt somewhere. It would be a good to be down. Are they under that little tent down there? Or is that hill? I like we play this. It'll be like, you know, uh, you know what I'd like to see here? Like an actual student section. Yes. Like, because we're playing like these like 
stuff that you know that Penn State st starts and people steal. Like Dunbar. And, yeah, because <laughs> Rob just brings it. Well, I would like to coming up on the Fort Myers game. We have our Orange Crush game, so hopefully. If you're listening in and coming to the game, make sure you wear your orange for the Fort Myers game. Orange crush. So that was a 14-yard TD pass. We can score 21-14. So I guess this is the water break right now. No water boy jokes? Um, you are not. I can tell you've got the, that lingering head cold. It's, yeah, it's not good. I'm going to take NyQuil tonight and hopefully sleep until noon kickoff tomorrow. Big day. Actually, that's not true, because I, I, I do like to, the fact that my dog wakes me up at 6.30. Actually, it's like 5.30 yeah. to go for a walk, and then I just, like, lounge on the couch. And I have to admit it, um, I'll say this for Falk, I uh, got into watching uh, Premier League soccer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my I know. word. I know. But it, it sort of helps because it's like you have that, it goes right up until noon kickoff, and it's like perfect. So then, uh, you know, I remember I don't have to do my chores. I can wait until Sunday to do the chores. All right, kickoff with a T. Hopefully not a squib kick, more of a pooch. Look at you. I know. Pooch kick. It's going to be, uh, no, it was like a squib kick. It's going to be fielded at the 31. By number five, he's going to reverse field all the way across. He's going to be at the 35, the 40, oh, the 45, okay. the 50, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds inside the 30 down to the 27. They answered us. Yeah. Just a good return. I mean, uh, when that happens, you got to stay in your lanes, and we got out of our lanes, and he just they outflanked us. Luckily, we had speed. Always got speed. Yeah, because 90% of the teams that Roe will play this year would score a touchdown on that. They'd score a touchdown. So, already down to the 28-yard line of Dunbar our, and leading 21-14. to 14. So, we've got stacked receivers to the right and left. Got a new tailback. Can't see who it is. No, it's Jenkins right up the middle, and he's going to have five and maybe eight yards. He's a big kid. Not fast, but big. He reminds me of uh, Perkins from last year. Oh, the percolator. Uh -huh. So. Reminds me of a saying. Snap, handed off to Jenkins up the middle. Now he bounces it outside this time, and he's going to have the first down and more, about five yards. So Wings is coming out. And, uh, Ghost Pepper Wings. Yep. Uh, first down, Vikings. He's coming in for him. I think it's Edwards. Yeah, it was Michael. So three receivers right, one to the left. Snap. It's going to be handed off to Jenkins up the middle. He's going to be churning, 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 and tackled for a gain of about four on the play. He tried okay. to get through that line. It's like a game of Red Rover right there. He really does. He runs very similar to Perkins. Like, Perkins, like, just drug people, and that's what he's doing. So, you get two receivers right, two left. Uh, Carter Smith is going to pitch it out Ooh. to the right here. With a do -si -do. And it's going to be loss of about one on the play. <clears throat> so He did a little do -si do spin, but the Tigers brought him down with so a loss. Yeah, it was another little option play, well defended that time by Dunbar. I believe it was uh, Kai Garcia. And uh, they just strung it out, and Carter Smith tried to drive him forward. We couldn't. So trips to the left, one to the right. Snap, it's going to be Carter Smith off the left side. He's going to be on. around the left side. A block in the back, no oh, call. He, he but he's still tackled out of all. Oh, they're going to they're call that. A late hit out of bounds, but no block in the back. So it's going to be a first and goal. With we don't know how much time on the clock. Nope. But it was a clear block at the back out there, and then no call, and then I couldn't see how far out of bounds it was, but apparently it was way out of bounds. 
getting the setup. So, I mean, it would have been first, fourth and about four, and now it's first and goal from the four. Like we talked about earlier, penalties. Yep. So, two receivers right. Snap. And it's going to slant past behind oh, him. And, oh. No good. Michael Edwards just hammered Carter Smith. That's why it was off target. Oh, he's going to talk about this one for oh. years. He creamed him. He's going to talk about this one for years. That was That's the time. Oh, where creamed corn. Thank you. Tried to set you up there. And you, I, I know. Mean, come sorry. on, Joe. Cream corn, peanut butter. So second and goal from the four. Man in motion. Timeout Dunbar. So we'll go to, um, well, we don't have really quick commercials, so we'll just keep it here. I mean, this is a, I, like you said, like not knowing, as a coach, not knowing how much time's left on the clock is hard because you're sitting here figuring, okay, um, if we, the clock's going, if we stop them, right, on a run play, we're out of timeouts, I think, now. Like, how much time do we have to score? So I think he's asking the question, like, how much time's left? Because, like, it's huge. Like Especially with a team like Vero when they move so quickly. Yeah, because, well, how much time do we have to answer this before halftime? You know, Dunbar has the offense to strike quickly, but it's one of those things where if they get if they punch it in here, like, are we going to have that opportunity? Or if there's only, like, 30 seconds left, you know, don't know. Nope, they have to go around. Just wave them around. Live. This is live. Live theater. With a lot of online talent. So we've got talent. three receivers to the right. Snap. It's going to be Car Smith pitching out to Jenkins on the right. He's going to be hit and tackled short of the goal line for third and goal at the two. Just wave around. Tell him to go. He has to go around. So we got uh, from now on, you got to go the other side because we're trying to do live radio. So Carter Smith off the left side. There's a hold, no call. And he's going to be hit and tackled, touchdown. But no call again on the hold. Um, sorry, we had like Grand Central Station here because you know we got to have the band people come through. I love like, the band. I do too, but this is live. Like, I can't pause stuff to open a door. Oh, Kurt Terry, Kurt Terry, Pterodactyl, you're getting fierce. No, I know. All I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have Rob put, like, huge signs. Live, do not come in. We have tw There's two doors. Go to the other door. We have 27 fans listening. Three of them. Well, and I, in I missed the call, which there was a hold on the, which, of course, the officials didn't call it. It's going to be That's, that up no in, good. It's good. What? 28 to 14. So, you know, we're getting back to the, like, they will call the obvious ones, but that was pretty obvious. 28 14. We had them there, and then it was, so you had the block in the back call on the one that they called the late hit out of bounds on, and then they had the hold on the touchdown. Well, we are a second half team. And magic will happen. Keep the faith. Oh, I keep the faith. We're a second half team. Mm hmm. But I apologize to the listeners because uh, we were distracted, um, like trying to wave people around. Like we have two doors for a reason. I know. And they probably missed out on one of my really good jokes. I don't know what like, the joke would have been there why, when we gave up a touchdown, Jill. Why don't grasshoppers like to play football? Oh, I see the, the time, the time guys, like, I think the guy right now in the middle. 
you just buzz killed my joke. Well, I was just, I'm trying to like, dude, he should wear a ha like one of those like digital hats. Yes. <laughs> so for the rest of our fans listening to my joke, it's because grasshoppers prefer cricket. Uh, okay. So line drive kick will be fielded at the 11 yard line. He's, he's going to be Demiria Loggins, and he's going to be tackled for a gain of about 20. So, yeah, he is really fast. So he almost, like, was too fast there. Like, I think if he would have, like, slowed down a second and then did a burst. So trying to see here. Um, I don't even know why I'm trying to, like, check the guy, find him, see if, like, he's given any signs. Mr. Purple shirt? No, the guy in the black shirt. Like That really narrows it down. No, he's right, he's the... Right by the stripe guy right there. All the I can see in my view is Mr. Carl C. Now Burnside. He's, moving to wearing, the right end. Jeans. he's wearing jeans. Yeah, I know. So got three to the receivers right, one left, straight back to pass goes Price. He's gonna throw it out and has it completed for Fletcher for a yard. So second and nine. It's better than zero yards. Yeah, that's, I think it uh, looked like his uh, foot slipped on that, and it came out low. So it brings up uh, second and nine from the Dunbar 38-yard line, trailing 28-14. Three receivers right, one left. Snaps, throws out to the right, completed Ooh, to, that was a high. to Cam Rivera, who has the first down and more. And They're pushing him back. Hey, look, forward progress. You see what I... Uh-oh. Oh, Throw no. the penalty flag! Like, kick that kid out of the game. A little scuffle broke out there. Cam Rivera actually didn't retaliate. He just let him go. And that official just let the guy go. He's right in front of you. If they call this both ways, it's an absolute joke. If you call this both ways, you are a spineless man. There's only one joke teller here, and it's me. That got a little scary, a little these, ugly. These Varel players are the dirtiest players we've played in years. They are dirty. Language, Kurt Terry, language. It should be 15 yards against them. Well, yep. they're moving them back. No, they're going to call They're Watch this. They're going to call it both ways. You gotta be kidding me. You are kidding me. You stink. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. You have no spine. What a joke of an official. Well, you, so things didn't go the way we wanted them the to. The guy is an absolute. That's a travesty. They let that kid do whatever he wants, and Cam actually didn't do anything to retaliate. Unbelievable. What a joke. Well, we're back in action. So snap straight back to Pasco's Price. He's going to roll to his right. Run it. And run he's going to throw it, and it's going to be incomplete. I feel like he should have listened to me and ran it. Uh, he, yeah, he might have had a couple yards. I mean, that is just... When, when officials do that, it's just like, oh, we don't want the Vero fans to be mad at us. We can only move forward, Kurt Terry, no. Pterodactyl. No, I have a long, Not thinking back. I have a long memory. We're moving forward. And I see a little bit of sparkle in their eyes now. I love a little like, tiger I, growl. I, can't wait to, I love talking to Coach Brown about these things after the games too. So we've got two receivers right, two to the left. Uh, Singleton to the left of Price. Snap, straight back to pass. He's going to throw to the he's Loggins on the left. Yeah, it makes a man miss. And he's going to have about five, maybe six yards. Now, Time, timeout Dunbar. So we must be in the waning minutes. Could you explain those orange flags hanging from some of their... their Probably keep their hands dry. Because if the, those gloves get wet, they get very slick. Okay. Just an honest question. I love, this is what I love about Coach Brown. Takes a timeout, all right? 
and he's like, dude, you are a joke. Like, explain to me how that is a personal foul both ways. Getting feisty. Because they've been cheap shotting our guys the entire night. Looks like it ended on a good note. No, it wasn't. Because he doesn't, he won't agree with it, and I agree with one hundred percent. He's gonna agree to disagree and say okay. So we got a uh, third, and uh, we're gonna call it four. So two receivers right, two to the left, shotgun formation. Snap straight back to Pasco's Bryce. He's going to throw it to Boom. Loggins. He's going to have the first down, and he's going to be tackled. Um, so this clock will stop. He did a little salsa in between there. They're going to try to spike it. Quick feet. Are they going to spike it, or are we going to go for it? Oh. They want to so, move quick. So Price gets the playoff quick. It's a low snap. He's going to go back. He's going to roll up in the pocket. Run he's it. He's going to be hit. No, he's going to break a tackle. He's going to be tackled. Short of the first down, so that probably will be the half. So now do we start over then? Yep. So it's halftime. Yeah, but just explain to the listeners that aren't understanding. What, what do you mean? Halftime? No, I know halftime, but halftime we start over. They don't get to start with their, you know, their downs. No, we get the opening kickoff. Okay. It's a brand I'm, new half. I am just letting our fans know. So the score is 28 to 14 of row. We'll be back after a couple uh, commercial breaks. Uh, Dunbar Trails, 28-14. You're listening to WWDH Tiger FM 93.3 and WMYE 91.9. Gigi's Meat and Groceries now have two locations to serve you in the Dunbar community. Gigi's is located at 3529 Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard. Gigi's is now open at 2190 Ford Street. Both stores specializes in meat bundle specials, money orders, bill pay services, Florida lottery tickets. Gigi's are serving customers seven days a week. Open Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Gigi's always offers high food from their kitchen, meats, produce, and beverages. Gigi's has been in the Dunbar Fort Myers community since 2014. And now you can enjoy two locations, 3529 Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard or 2190 Ford Street. Gigi's is a proud supporter of Dunbar High School and Dunbar High School Tiger Sports. Have you ever thought about changing your career path or have you ever considered trying something new? Fort Myers Technical College, FMTC, offers training for many of the top career paths in Southwest Florida. In less than a year, you can be trained, industry certified, and ready to work as a welder, HVAC tech, or a medical assistant. FMTC offers over 20 programs and is one of the most affordable colleges in Southwest Florida. They also have a fantastic culinary program. For more information on how to enroll, please go to www myerstech.edu FMTC a career in a year This is WWDH LP 93.3 FM operating in the Dunbar community of Fort Myers WWDH LP 93.3 FM will be serving the Dunbar community of Fort Myers You're listening to WWDH 93.3 Fort Myers Welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm Stadium where Dunbar trails uh, at the half, 28-14. And uh, Coach Falk said he replayed the double personal foul. And he said the dude was wrangling Rivera's knee while he was trying to get away. And so he said it was a joke. Uh, Fort Myers up 14-6 over Riverdale, he also said. Um, you know, the thing is... Um, they've given up four touchdowns, but of the four touchdowns, only one drive was over 28 yards. They've had fantastic field position the entire game, uh, Bishop Burrell. Um, you know, whether it's been um, bad uh, 
kicks, you know. Squid kicks is what we like to call um, them in the biz. Well, no, there was one that was 40 yards. So there's one 40 yards. But it was just like um, they had a good uh, kick return the one time. And then, um, you know, they had we had a couple bad kicks. But it's just one of those things where um, Dunbar, I think they played pretty well. And, uh, you know, Carter Smith is just making plays and they got to figure out a way to stop the running game because the passing game has not hurt them at all. I mean, it's just been all uh, running by Carter Smith uh, um, Ver- and the big guy. The big guy that can move. Yeah, Jenkins. Varro is a – it is an excellent team, you can tell. But no, we are very definitely answering them. And I think we're going to go into Rejuvenation Station here at halftime. Yeah, I mean, like that, and that, you know, going back to that personal foul, like, uh, or, you know, we made it down to, what, the 32-yard line. So if you if you figure that's 15 yards down the field, we're making throws into the end zone, possibly scoring, you know, because we're down 15 yards closer, you know, than what we would have been on that little five-yard scramble at the end of the half. So, um, it's 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 hard to say, you know, what they need to improve. Obviously, um, the offensive line play has been pretty good, I thought, for Dunbar. Um, they've had a couple blown assignments where, you know, Tawasi's gotten hammered. Uh, Chris Singleton's gotten hammered. You know, Price has been hammered multiple times. But for the most part, I thought they did a pretty good job. I tell you what, they take a licking and keep on ticking. Yep, like a Timex. Yes. And then, um, you know, the thing is they got to make adjustments with that the defensive line um, because they're just uh, beating us, you know, at the point of attack. And now we've got a little mini football game going along, along with our band. Yeah. I love watching the band. Trombone. So, um, yeah, I mean, I thought they we did a good job. We just gotta, I think we gotta get the ball into uh, Tawasi's hands more, um, and Eric Fletcher. I feel like they've been saving him a little. He hasn't been out there the whole game. Tawaski? Yeah. Yeah, he's been out there. Not the whole time. Yeah, he has. Mm. He just so he started at tailback, and then when he moves to receiver. Like, he sort of, uh, like, goes away, um, you know, but so get some scores here at halftime. Shout outs to everyone listening, all our fans. Summer Kazire, I know you're listening. Uh, the Winters, I'm, I know, are listening. Um, so, like I said, Riverdale, 14-6 over, or Fort Myers over Riverdale late in the second quarter. South up 7-0 on North late in the second. Lake Gibson up 20-14 on Lehigh at the half. Eastley and Island Coast 7-7 at the half. And Mooney leads ECS uh, 10-3 at the half. So most of the game's at the half. Um, yeah, it's really hard to, you know, like I said, it's hard to manage that clock at the end of that um, half. Especially when, when you can't see yeah, it. Yeah, because... It's hard for Coach Brown because he could have called some timeouts earlier, maybe, um, to you know to preserve some time. I don't like you don't know, and um, if I don't I don't know if they have a person on the other side that they're communicating because you know the Vro's going through the same thing. Like, how do you manage? Because they probably want to take as much time off the clock before the half. Then you know, so. Um, yeah, we just need a scoreboard. We need a scoreboard, but you know we do have some mesmerizing dancers on our on the team in the in the band here. Can't take my eyes off. We usually off have them. like flags and stuff, no? Yeah. Times are hard. We don't have a scoreboard. Are we smaller, for sake. Uh, smaller this year, but yes, morosis. small but mighty. That's what they say. We usually have a like a, a like a ton of drummers too. We're only down to two. But they sound good. I can hear them from up here. Yep. So anyway, let's uh, you know, um, if Rob can come over here, if he gets a second, um, I want to ask him about these uh, new, commercials. new commercials. Like, can we play them? I don't know. 
I had a commercial on there. I don't know if it's still playing. I well, it, these are like I think commercial Special commercials. Football like, commercials. One says no. One says like half cent sales tax. Well, okay, why would I play a half cent? The other one is a USA promo national tag. Well, we know that Gigi's. The but meat, that one's like from market. like a week ago, and then Footworks promo. Okay. They could get some what's free fo- advertising. What's Footworks? Sounds exciting. Footloose. <laughs> Better than f- foot not works. So, like, if Rob can tell me if I can play it, <laughs> um, because I keep playing the same ones over and over and over again. Well, you know what this calls for. Yeah, so let's do I'll do some uh, recap of the scoring. Uh, so, Vero got on the board first with a uh, Carter Smith four-yard touchdown run to make the score 7-0. Um, then Dunbar came back and answered right away. Um, got the score to 7-6, uh, but missed the extra point, which you thought was good. I know. I messed up on that one. Well, no. We can all make one I'd mistake. rather take your word for it than theirs. True. Um, and then uh, shortly thereafter, uh, Carter Smith on a two-yard uh, touchdown run Um, That one, I remember he fumbled into the end zone and their guy. So technically, it was that guy's touchdown. But someone's going to get the glory. Yeah, I don't know who scored it. So, I mean, he's the only one anybody knows on that team. Carter Smith is going to get the glory. Then uh, another Carter Smith, this time from uh, 50 yards out. Rob, can I play those promos? Mm -hmm. Like, can I play these three? Like, I only play the GGs in the FMTC, but... Here, here, and there's a whole bunch there. Yeah, but that's like... Dude, take care of my What? Oh. You, just get yourself an, another computer so you can just do it over there. It's internet-based. It's like testing. He knows what he's talking about. We've got the... The radio magician with us. No, Rob Robbins is somewhere else. Oh! Tried to burn you. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, let's try some of these new ones. I do like the new soundboard that he gave us this year. It's really nice. Just uh, got to figure sassy, it out. Pretty sassy, spicy. Yeah. So we'll go. Let's try the new promos. We'll be back here. Uh, 93.3 WWDH Tiger FM and WMYE 91.9. Here's what's coming up next. Greatest Hits USA. Hey, this is Chuck Matthews on Greatest Hits USA. And coming up this weekend, we're going to answer the following questions. Who paid his lawyer with a song? What singer spent an entire afternoon on a trampoline? And who had the number one record this week in 1969? Find out. Turn it up this weekend right here. Greatest Hits USA, Sundays at high noon on Tiger FM. Greatest Hits USA. Today's featured sponsor of our music on Tiger FM is Footworks Active Podiatry. Footworks Active Podiatry is owned and operated by Dr. Serena Sadre, who specializes in complete foot care, sports medicine, wound care, and diabetic foot care. Dr. Sadre believes that you should have happy feet. Footworks Active Podiatry can be reached at 239-590-8860. That's 239-590-8860. We thank Dr. Sadre and Footworks Active Podiatry for being today's sponsor of our music on Tiger FM. If you would like to sponsor a day of music on the Tiger, email Rob at TigerFM.com. You are listening to Tiger Football. Tonight's sponsors include Joe North and the North Law Firm, Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity, GG Groceries on MLK in Fort Myers, followers of Christ Fellowship Ministries, John Tobler Construction Company, Big Will's Barbecue and Catering, Shelving and More Fort Myers, Five Guys Burgers and Fries Fort Myers, St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church, Young Life, you were made for this, King Saad of North Fort Myers. We thank tonight's sponsors for supporting Dunbar High School Athletics right here on Tiger FM 93.3, serving your Dunbar community and on TigerFM.com.
Welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm Stadium where Dunbar trails 28-14 and a half. But they get the kick, uh, opening half kick to start the second and a half. So, um, you know, moving into the second half, like you said, don't want to, like, think back. Um, but I think they can take a lot of positives from the first half, especially with a young offensive line. And, uh, you know, they just have to tighten it up defensively. I think <coughs> this is the, the most points we've given up in a regular season game in a while. So, you know, the season if the defense could pitch a shutout the second half, um, I think the offense is going to put some points up um, where I think we could actually win comfortably. But, um, you know, it's going to have to start with the, the front seven, and the linebackers are really going to have to start making some tackles. Yep. Three snaps, a whistle, and a touchdown. That's all we need. Three snaps, a whistle, and a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, why not? Going to be a touchdown and a whistle? Sure. <laughs> Don't um, forget the three snaps. This kind of snap. Oh, three. Uh, I thought you meant just like Football snaps? on third down. Nope. Okay. I just so we got a, a little pickup game out on the field. My uh, eighth grade son would be losing his mind to know that he yeah. could be out here playing. And did you happen to mention um, what Mr. Burnside's wearing today? I did. I spied. Actually, it took my breath away. I walked in and saw a flash of denim, and it took my breath away. And if you know Carl C. Burnside, you know that he doesn't wear jeans ever except for that one time back in 2000 that I have a picture of him wearing denim on denim. That was the last time I saw him in jeans. I think because he's so slim and trim now. Yeah, I mean, it's but I think it's you should ask, you know, since he's wearing jeans now. We should be able to wear them on Fridays. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I hope someone got a picture of him. Oh, I'm sure. There's plenty of pictures. Text Matt. He'll get one. Good idea. Or actually, just text Dr. Rose because Matt never, like, he'll respond three weeks from now. Uh, I'm the same way. I'll yeah. forgive you, Matt Miller. All right. I'm getting, I'm, I'm actually getting jittery. A little excited about this second half. I think the band really fired me up. They were on fire. They were. As the kids say, they were they, gas. Or you say a, small and ferocious. Yeah. They were gas, not a 26-pound bass. That's what the kids say nowadays. Yep. So if you're just tuning in, uh, the score is 28-14 uh, uh, for O. Um, and once again, that's the longest halftime I've ever seen. Well, that's kind of how we're rolling now. So um, we might as well pay the bills one more time before the start of the second half. We'll be back here, 93.3 WDH Tiger FM and WMYE 91.9. include Alessino's Restaurant in Fort Myers, Buffalo Wings and Rings in Fort Myers, Bobby Dennis Handyman, serving the Fort Myers community, St. John First Missionary Baptist Church in Fort Myers, Veronica Shoemaker Florist in Fort Myers, Marathon Gas Edison Oil, Bulk on Edison Avenue in Fort Myers, Cap City Auto and Cabs on Fowler Street in Fort Myers, the Community Press Newspaper, serving your Dunbar, Fort Myers community and Lee County, TLP Financial Services, Southern Machine Steel, SMS on Flint and Edison Avenue here in Fort Myers. We thank tonight's sponsors for supporting Dunbar High School Athletics right here on Tiger FM 93.3, serving your Dunbar community and on TigerFM.com. You're listening to the 2022 FHSAA Class 3S Region 4. We'll pause that. It just says station ID here, uh, but it was... 2022 was a good year for us. That was... Yeah, but that we wanted to pause that because I think that was the last one. But, um, yeah, so uh, longest halftime in history. Um, longest first half in history. I mean, it's like 9 o'clock, and both teams have been running the football. There haven't been a lot of incomplete passes. So how is it an hour and a half? It's like, I don't know if you've been watching college football, but college football changed the rules to where 
they could, there's a running clock. So they do it like the NFL. Faster. So, yeah. So you would think. But if you've noticed, the games last just as long because they fill, with because it gets, it gets more commercial time, they fill it with commercials. Follow the money, like, Pterodactyl. It's ridiculous. I'm like, okay, this is great. Like a, a college football game will be done in three hours. Three hours and 45 minutes later, it's over. Like, yeah, but football watching's fun. Why do we want it to go fast? But you're watching you're, more commercials than you are game time almost. Yeah, but we all know what you're doing when you're watching. Eating popcorn. Well, um, yeah, like, I don't, don't eat the popcorn, but <laughs> um, that's the problem. It should be done sooner so then you eat less popcorn. True. So, um, looks like the boys are fired up coming out after halftime. I like that. The coaching staff in some brilliant orange shirts. Can't miss them. <laughs> I, yeah. I like the shirts. Me too. I want to get me one. Let's see. A lot of bad weather in Collier, so game started late. Game oh. started late in Collier County. The Mockley up on Naples, 3-0 in the first. That's going to be a late night for them. Yep. So, Falk keys the second half, stop A-gap blitz. Um, and for run defense, lights, lots of adjustments. Score right now at the half <coughs> is 28, Bishop Verreau, 14 Dunbar, but you know what? I'm a, I'm a half glass full sort of sort of girl. Yeah. And uh, that's only two touchdowns away. That's easy. Yeah. I mean, it is, especially with our our offense. I mean, the thing is, like, what happened last week is Dunbar got up early, and this is a team that can throw the ball, so it's not like you know, they would panic if they got behind. But um, you know. They haven't put the ball up where Dunbar can actually make plays on it and, and get pick sixes and that kind of thing. They're just keeping it on the ground, and, you know, um, ball security has been perfect. They haven't even been close to turning the ball over. So uh, they're doing what they need to be uh, to do here offensively, you know, slowing the game down, keeping Dunbar's offense off the field. And, you know, they're, they got – some key penalties to keep drives alive in that first half to get two scoring drives. So don't forget both of those, uh, two of those scoring drives, actually three of those scoring drives were a result of a um, fourth down uh, penalty that resulted in, well, no, because one was a fourth down penalty that was fourth and short, but the other two resulted in a fourth down and two first downs. I tell you what, penalties, just like defense, wins games. And the only yep. one that I really had a question on was the one where there was a block at the back out there, and um, it was also the late hit out of bounds. And so your, um, your head exploded. No, my head exploded more so on the, the double personal foul of the spineless head referee. Tell us I how mean, you really feel. I mean, it's just it's, it's their way of just being like they have no cojones. Zero. Ooh, Spanish. Yeah. I watched, uh, you know, Narcos. I was a Spanish club secretary. Really? In 1993. I so took German. I am German. So, my favorite German word, Krankenschwester. You know, we used to have a German teacher from Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania. I know. Herr Gunther. Yep. Shout out to Herr Gunther and, if you're listening in. Uh, he's not, and his dad was our prince. It was uh, Mr. Miller and my principal in high school. Small world. Yep. And his brother was a DJ. Ooh. Yeah. We know, you know, Kurt Terry and I know a very famous DJ. DJ. TJ. Sam. TJ the DJ. Well, we have three because Sam three. Brown and then X Xavier. Expialidocious. Yep. So. And um, we've got a lot of. And TJ the DJ. That's three. Chuck Dunbar is chock full of DJs. Well, now there's only two. Yeah. All right. I can see sparkles 
mixed in with fierceness in their eyes. I told them all to be aggressive today. I feel like maybe I should have worn more of an aggressive outfit with a lot of louder colors today. You know, and, and you know, going back to like the center, you know, the center has to be the toughest position to play outside a quarterback because you figure you have somebody lined up right on you or really close to you. You have to snap the ball between your legs and then somehow get your hands up really quick. So um, to hold somebody accountable for like some low snaps, um, not a big deal. He caught him. He did okay. It was just one snap that he sort of fumble beat on. So Gadsden's going to kick it away. Dunbar going left to right. Let's see if it's a squib. Nope, it's a line nope. drive kick, and it's going to go into the end zone. Not quite a pooch. Like, seriously. Like, the guy is celebrating kicking a ball into the end zone like he's, like, going to college to play football. It probably won't happen. Well, he'd make a really good cheerleader. Yeah, I mean, make it. You know, there's too. there could be cheerleader scouts out there. Could be. You can send it to him. Yeah, because he was, like, mm -hmm. doing dance moves. So it brings up uh, first and ten for Dunbar at their own 20. <coughs> oh. We had too many men. Interesting. They look like they're counting. So, yeah. So we're going um, one receiver right, one receiver left, two H-backs. Snap, handoff to Singleton up the middle. Right it's up the middle. Have nothing. Through the middle. Someone lost a someone lost their bonnet. And it was fifty six, fifty five. No, Josh. Miller lost his helmet. And he has to come out. So he where's our that's, you gotta, that's what like I always like the backup lineman should be down with the offensive coaches because he had to run you know yeah 40 yards number 78 brilliant miles <coughs> so brings up second and uh i guess they gave him one so second and nine same formation snap straight back to pasco's uh, price oh he's getting the hell you gotta be kidding me you gotta be kidding me he threw it off into space it was right That's out there. That's because he held him. That is an absolutely yeah. uh, atrocious call. He, so I'm guessing he didn't get his spine back yet. Like, seriously. Like, how dumb can you be? That's a clear hold. Clueless Joe Jackson. You guys, yeah, tell him, Sammy. He's garbage. Language. Language, Kurt Terry. Like, it's just absolutely atrocious. Like, don't come if you're going to be that bad. Your mom doesn't even like you, bro. <laughs> she Straight does. Straight back to pass has a man open in the middle, but he tucks right it to run. Right up in the middle. And go, he's going to get go. about two. Oh, he had Cam Rivera wide open, but he had to tuck it and run it. I think he got sc scared. A little scared. But that's a huge no-call penalty by this horrible official down here. Look, he's too worried about sideline. Look at him. Look at him. He's doing the sideline uh, line Get a dance. clue, bro. Like, seriously, you're worried about sideline warning and you can't see a holding call right in front of your face. All right, ready for some action. You watch, he's going to call a really bad one against us, too, because that's what happens to our team. A uh, high snap is going to be, ooh, nice kick, long kick. Looks... And it's going to be fielded at the 41-yard line. They went back, and Price might have been able to run for it. So we might be able to look at that. So they did this earlier when we punted it. They're really setting up for the return. So their whole line is actually going backwards. Their defensive line is setting up the return. Um, so I, later on, you, you might want to keep an eye on that. I will. I'll probably keep two eyes on it. I'd keep one good eye. If I were a Cyclops, I'd keep one. <laughs> one eye. 
right so up the middle. Right up through. the middle. This is sick. They're playing Red and Rover. He's going to be tackled for a gain of 20. So right up the middle. I feel like our line was made of scotch tape there. Yeah, well, I was thinking more of a sieve, but. Um, so four receivers, two receivers right, one left snap. He's going to throw this uh, hitch route, and it's going to be completed and tackled for a gain of about six yards. Like, like you said, they haven't thrown much. Tonight. No, but see, what they're doing is they're mixing up because they, what they saw us come up, right? They we we're gonna sell out for the run that time, so they just faked it and just threw a little hitch route. It's like a it's like a handoff, long handoff. So two receivers right, one to the left. Snap, hands off to Jenkins. He's up the middle, and he's going to be hit mm -hmm. and tackled for a gain of about two. He ran right into traffic. He's going to bring up third in about two for uh, Vero at the Dunbar 30-yard line. I mean, they've had fantastic field position this entire game. I feel like they're trying to control the tempo of this game, moving it quick, well, they, quick, 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 quick. They are, but they're also churning time because they're running the ball. So man in motion is number five. Snap, it's going to be handed off to Jenkins. He's up the middle. He's going to have the first down and more. Um, oh, what are we going to call Something. here? Are we going to call holding? Well, let's not move the sticks yet there, dudes. All right, I like our chain crew was anxious to move for the first down. It's so the area of holding. Holding on the offense. That will be a 10-yard penalty and repeat third down. We will take it. So so it's a spot penalty. So it's uh, <coughs> a loss of about three. So it's about third and five now. So we're going to go shotgun. Two receivers left, one to the right. Um, oh, offsides. Like, seriously. Pre-snap penalties. Pre-snap penalties. That was too bad. Who got that call against them? So is it going to be third and short? So it's third and short. So it's about fourth and five and a half. Or third and five and a half. But, you know, now it's it gets it third and short right where they want right, right where they want to be. So we got a, a muddle formation. They're going to do the steal from the Philadelphia Eagles playbook. And we have a seven-layer salad out there. And it's going to be a first down. I think, right? I believe so. Score. Yep, first down. Currently is 28-14. So I'm wondering when they're going to outlaw that, that rule. Like, because it's like, it doesn't take much skill to do it, to yeah. get people to push forward. Uh, so we've got three receivers right, one to the left. Man in motion, snap, straight back to pass goes Smith. He's going to throw he it deep, it has a man ooh. in the end zone, touchdown. That was, that was a good play. <coughs> we weren't ready for that one. Nope. Well... That makes the score 34. I couldn't see who the number was. 34-14. 34-14 Vikings. The extra points. Smith to, I think it was number eight. Falk can let me know. I think it was number eight. J Jadrian Carmo. Carmo. Like camo, but car. Yep. So. And did we go off sides again? I missed it. Starting to hurt a little bit, though. Well, I mean, These it's penalties. just like. Well, no, I mean. It's just, you know, call, Falk called it like. Uh, you're going to de decline the penalty. Replay the try. Uh, let's see. Number five caught it. Sorry. Thank you. Matthew Turner. Yeah, 
Going for the kick. And the kick is up, and it's good. Yep, it's so good. So 35-14. So 35-yard TD pass. I mean, it's uh, it's all Carter Smith. <coughs> it's time to go like Maverick and turn those afterburners on for the Tigers. So I mean, they're gonna have they're gonna have to answer quickly here. Um, get some mojo going because there's no mojo on the sideline right now. And, you know, if you remember last year, Fort Myers, everybody was like, woe is me until the end of the game. So uh, it's never over until it's over. So just got to make a uh, you know, big touchdown here, three and out, and then you're right back in the game. Right. Energy is contagious. We're going to have those leaders out there needed to get Everyone energized. Cheerleaders are doing a good job doing that. So what, what's taking so long? We, there has to be a delay of game here. It's because we don't have a clock. Oh, they're, they have. Come on, dude. He's, their kicker's cramped. So he's like, just get him off the field. The guy, he was too busy. That's the celebration guy. <laughs> too busy oh. cramping. Or celebrating and cramping. All right. <laughs> it's the kicker, Falk. <laughs> uh, he said the same thing I said. So this kid, has, he's a, I was watching him warm up. They have two good kickers. Do we only have Price, correct? Well, they have a new kid on the roster as a kicker. Um, so line drive kick. It's going to be fielded by Loggins at the 15-yard line. He's going to After run it burners. to the right. After he's going to be tripped. Keep no, going. he's going to break a tackle. He's going to be down Keep the sideline, and he's going to be hit. Nice block and by And tackled it. out of bounds, but since he wasn't thrown down, no call. So, yeah, we have a, a kicker 83, but I don't even see 83 down there. Maybe they just put him on the roster just in case. Who's that, number eight? Oh, yeah. Number eight. Oh, Kelby, Tyree. Mateo Sanez. Kelby Tyree, I believe that was a gorgeous block. Did he? Mm -hmm. So Dunbar's offense back on the field. We go four wide receivers. We're gonna go one receiver to the near side, three to the far side. We've got Singleton in the backfield with Price to his right. Hand off to Singleton, and he's off the left go. side, and he's going to make a man miss Keep and going. then get up, hit and up. tackled out of bounds. He got a couple yards out of that. Yeah, about a gain of one. I am. We just need to get some energy going. So it brings up second and 10, no gain on the play. It's a long way to run for no gain. <laughs> so got three receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Price getting the call in from the sideline. Snap, straight back to pass. He's going to throw a long pit, pass out to Fletcher. Go, He's going to be go. hit and tackled for a gain of about two. He need a little help out there. <coughs> yeah. It was a valiant effort, but Fletcher definitely needed a little help. That's a long pass. I mean, you're throwing it uh, like we said it last year when um, – now, Price has a, a pretty strong arm, but last year Landon had a cannon, and you're throwing that, you know, 25 yards. So it's it gives them time to, to recover. So snap, straight back to pass to Price. He throws out this time complete to Tawaski. He's going to be hit and tackled for a loss of two. So it brings up fourth down. Like, like I, I like how we're trying to get it into the playmaker's hands, but we're throwing 25 yards to do so, you know. Um, I think there's, you know, I'm no professional, but I am wearing football earrings. I feel like which they makes should. you a professional. Of course, it totally qualifies me. 
I'm feeling like they shouldn't throw it to the side so much. No, I, I, it's it's like it's really good play calling by Hudgens to do so because it gets in the hands of our speedy guys. Um, it's just like you're throwing it 25 yards to get it to them. So by the time he catches it, they have it. They've already to, set yeah. up to get you. Yeah. So you could scheme around it. So Price going to kick it away. Line drive kick. Come it's going to take a Dunbar. No, nope, it's going to go out of bounds. I think he should have taken off there. Like, I think he gets the first down. I tell you what, they're switching it up. But I was just looking at the roster here. And off the top of my head, I counted five players that uh, I had their parents in class. Nice. So I guess that makes me a real young whippersnapper. So we'll do water break. We'll be back here. TigerFM.com, 93.3 WWDH and WMIE 91.9. You're listening to the 2022 FHSAA Class 3S Region 4 game on... You're listening to Tiger Football. Tonight's sponsors include Malasino's Restaurant in Fort Myers, Buffalo Wings and Rings in Fort Myers, Bobby Dennis Handyman, serving the Fort Myers community, St. John First Missionary Baptist Church in Fort Myers, Veronica Shoemaker Florists in Fort Myers, Marathon Gas Edison Oil, Bulk on Edison Avenue in Fort Myers, Cap City Auto and Cabs on Fowler Street in Fort Myers, the Community Press Newspaper, serving your Dunbar, Fort Myers community and Lee County, TLP Financial Services, Southern Machine Steel, SMS on Flint and Edison Avenue here in Fort Myers. We thank tonight's sponsors for supporting Dunbar High School Athletics right here on Tiger FM 93.3, serving your Dunbar community and on TigerFM.com. Welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm Stadium where the row has it first and 10. They're going to throw a pop pass that's going to be incomplete. Oh, that was an opportunity for a that safety to make a play. Uh, because that was overthrown, and there were two Dunbar Tigers in the area. Right there that could have snatched that up. So brings up uh, second and ten. Trying to, I mean, come on, dude, you're not Tim Tebow. It's he didn't, he wasn't on Swamp Kings. Oh, I did just start watching <laughs> that, though. So... Snap, it's going to be Carter Smith keeping it going on with the right side. He's running. He's going to have about four and then slides down. He pushed him back a little bit. No, he slid. It, he, you know, he's like the third kid I saw slide out there. Well, um, quarterbacks are taught to do that. Really? Yeah, because once they initiate the slide, they can't get hit. So it's a safety thing. I am learning something new every day. A squib, a pooch, a slide. That's because you're an Ohio State fan. You don't like no, uh, my yeah. brain's just filled with too many other things. <laughs> um, so third, and we're going to call it six. Two receivers right, one left. Uh, trying to draw Dunbar offside snap, and he's going to roll him. to his left as Smith. He's going to throw, has a man open, oh. and it's going to be completed. For the first down, great catch there it by number five. It was a great catch. I feel like they're acting a little more aggressive. Well, that time. Like taking more chances. As soon as he Trying. left the pocket, um, the corner came up on it. And they're going quick again. Snap's going to be handed off to Jenkins off the, oh no, not Jenkins, the new guy off the same result. Off the left, then bounces to the right and then gets... Upfield for a gain of 11. Red Rover game again. Off the left, break tackle. Off the right, break tackle. And he's coming up a little uh, crampy. So two receivers left to the right. Snap is going to be handed off to another tailback who's ripped down. Uh, but still a gain of, I mean, there was a tackle made by number 44 that time. 44. Logan Gardella. I'm looking at the wrong one. So it brings up uh, second and six. Two receivers right, one to the left. Snap is going to be fake pitch, and he's going to have a man deep. It's and he's, a long It's throw. going to be overthrown. Oh. He, um, was, he was making an effort, though. But there was two receivers over there and only one defender. So somebody blew a coverage. Um, luckily... 
I can't. I think that was Kelby over there, who tried to make up for it and got over there. And no, not Kelby. Kelby's on this side, I think. Or is it Kelby? It is Kelby. So Kelby like did some makeup speed because he was covering the inside guy and the outside guy. There was nobody within 30 yards of him. So he did some double duty there. Yep. So brings up third and six. Snap. It's going to be pitched out to uh, Jenkins. He's off the right side. He's going to have the first down. Boom, and he's going to be her, her, It's going to be a personal foul horse collar, collar tackle. That's what that's called, a horse collar tackle? Yeah, horse collar tackle. When you grab them by the collar and make them yeah. somersault? But technically, the horse collar tackle is supposed to be, now I don't know if it's the same thing for high school, but it's supposed to be them pulling them backwards. So he didn't pull them backwards in that case. So technically, in college football, it's not a personal foul. I'm writing down all these new vocabulary words I'm learning today. Oh, they're today. called a face mask. They that was obviously a, a horse collar. It looked like he had him from the back of the jersey, so I don't know how the face mask is behind him, so I'll have to have Falk replay that one. But regardless, it's first and goal. Um, from the line, first and goal. Man in motion. Snap, hand off to Jenkins. He's off the right side. There's a hold, no call again. And tackled for a gain of uh, maybe two on the play. Uh oh. Veneer had to come out because uh, I think Cramp? he lost his treads. His tires came off his feet. Uh oh. It's time it's, to reshoe that one. Yeah. So, man in motion. Snap. It's going to be Carter Smith up the middle. He's going to be in the end zone. Oh, touchdown. Touchdown. Touchdown, so Vikings. That's, so, he's had all their touchdowns tonight. So, that's six. So 41 to 14, and we'll, pending the extra point, start seeing, yep, mass exodus here from the Dunbar side. Still a lot of game time left. We wouldn't know that, though. Well, it's still in the third quarter. Really? It was tackled by the back of the helmet. Not so the that's horse collar. so it's an oh, it's not the right call though it's an open like there's a actual call for that oh and then we rough the kicker and it was good and Tawaski is coming up who's on the ground Tawaski because <coughs> I think him and somebody else collided when they roughed the kicker. So that's going to be 15 yards. So they're going to be kicking it from the 40, R45. Not really the direction we wanted to go. Yep. No, but this is, I mean. So do you always get 15 yards when you rough the kicker? Or is that? So there's running and there's roughing. So roughing the kicker is an egregious. Like that was egregious. Like, so that's a personal foul. If it's just like, you know. He like falls on you, or you know that like kind of thing. Like it was an accident. Yeah. yeah, it's like a five yard so, incidental. This, so the real deal when you're being a rascal, you get 15 yards for roughing the kicker. I'm writing this down. All my listeners at home, you should write it down too. Be amazing what you learn when you're on the radio. See, look. <laughs> Who's getting busted? No, like, no, we, uh, it's a 15-yard penalty, so they're kicking off from R45. Our, our guys just oh. didn't know it. So that's where, like, our special teams coach needs to, like, make sure we're lined up properly at the 35. So that would be special teams coach Singleton? Uh, I think that's who it is. I think so. Yep, they're, yep, he has them lined up perfectly. Wonderful. So they're going to go. Seriously, this is you're going to go for an onside kick up. Squib. 
And, oh, Logan got it again. Another nice play by Logan. That's the second one that he got. That's a nice turn of events right there. Yeah. It's like like when you're up a bunch, like, stealing home. Falk, you know, like, I almost uh, got into it with uh, certain other teams coach when we coach baseball. No, you didn't. Oh, yeah. You're very level-headed when then, it comes to sports. And then I knew his principal, and I sent them a scathing email. And um, I did get an apology back from the person. And I'm sure you framed it. No, I should have. <laughs> I think I, like, used it as toilet paper. But anyway, three receivers right, one to the left. Snap straight back to pass because Price is rolling to his right. Run, run, He's gonna Price. He's going to deep, and he has a man that's going to be completed to go, Loggins. Go, 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 He's go. at the 45 and go. steps out go. of bounds at the – no, he's still on his feet. They, I thought he was out of bounds at, like, the 47th, and he gets it all the way down to the 35. So I think that's what they're going to have to do with Price a little bit more. He's more mobile than what we had last year, and he throws the ball really well in the run. Um, so get him on the perimeter and have him throw um, on design throws. So it brings up uh, first and 10 inside the thir down to the 35. So straight back to pass. There he goes. Right. Run. He's going to run it out run to it. the right. He's going to have the – he's going to have about five, three yards. So, we'll average so they were four. looking for uh, Fletcher, who was going deep, but um, uh, number three was, like, literally 30 yards away from him. So it's hard to run by him when he's giving you that much cushion. So it's going to be the end of the – no. We don't know. It, I, we think it's the end of the third. No, it's uh, – oh, Tawaski's cramping over there. So we'll go, we'll go to a commercial break. We'll be back here. WWDH, Tiger FM, WMYE, 91.9. Dunbar Trails, 42 to 14. You are listening to Tiger Football. Tonight's sponsors include Joe North and the North Law Firm, Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity, GG Groceries on MLK in Fort Myers, followers of Christ Fellowship Ministries, John Tobler Construction Company, Big Will's Barbecue and Catering, Shelving and More Fort Myers, Five Guys Burgers and Fries Fort Myers, St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church, Young Life, you were made for this, King Saad of North Fort Myers. We thank tonight's sponsors for supporting Dunbar High School Athletics right here on Tiger FM 93.3, serving your Dunbar community and on TigerFM.com. Welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm Stadium, where Dunbar trails forty-eight. Or sorry, forty-two to fourteen. Uh, it's good to see Tawasi up and walking off. A little crampage action. So it's humid out there, and they already remember they skipped the first water break. Yes. So I'm blaming that on the f miss, missed opportunity hydration. to get hydration. I mean, Domination. You know it is. The water, like in your the water boy taught us this, yeah. you know, H2O. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to hand it to this uh, Vero team. They are slick, and they are giving us. I love Sammy. Sammy Brown's still giving it to the white hat. But because that no call on the, on the holding was huge because that opened the second half, and Dunbar could have gotten some momentum. Changed the trajectory it of did. the game. It did. The entire – and because the guy's too busy worrying about sideline warnings. So we've got uh, three receivers left, one to the right. Snap straight back to pass his price. He's going to tuck it. As for face mask, no call. That's what Hudgens is even yell is yelling, like face mask. That was a face mask. I could see that. So, brings up a third and ten. I wonder how many times he's been sacked tonight. 
Dunbar is the team that usually does all the sacking, and we haven't done any tonight. We haven't played inside their half of the, or, or in their backfield at all, I don't think, tonight, which is unusual. So we got uh, three receivers left, one to the right. Snap straight. Oh, low snap, and Price is going to be oh, sacked again. dang it. Price is taking a beating today. Yeah, I, you could. I, I tell you what, he is one tough kid. He and he is really because big. on. Oh, sorry. No, yeah. a lot of low snaps, and he hasn't fumbled yeah. them at all. Well, that one when he got hit, the guy was laying on the ground. So, in the funny thing is, when that happens to an offensive lineman, it's called a chop block. Now say that again. It's <laughs> called a chop block. When you engage somebody high and another person engages somebody low it's a personal foul they're going to go for it here on fourth and 22 straight back to pasco's price he's going to throw it has a man all right cameron he's got rivera. it he's going to be hit and tackled short of the first down number five cam rivera yeah but it's going to be turnover on downs that was a, that was a beautiful beautiful throw it was I'm telling you, if you watch it, given time, Price throws a really accurate ball. So that's going to be the key moving forward to any games. So the takeaway I'm seeing is we need to run Price and throw the ball at the same time. No, I wouldn't run Price much at all. No, like no, run and yeah, throw. No, like roll him out of the pocket. Is that the, the terminology we're going to use nowadays? Roll him out of the pocket. Well, I mean, it's, it is a turn, run, right? run and gun. Yeah. So we're going to go trips to the left, one receiver to the right. Jenkins is the lone tailback to the left. Snap straight back to Pascos Carter. He's going to roll to his right, and he's going to look, and he's going to tuck it, and he's going to run out of bounds for a gain of maybe one. So good job there by Kelby Tyree. Because he was looking deep. Sometimes you get sucked up there. I'm still working on roll out of the pocket. <laughs> so it brings up uh, second and ten. Snap. It's going to be pitched out to Jenkins. He's off to the he, left side. And he's there's a be giant hole. First down and plenty more. And then upended by Kai Garcia. But there's like um, the pitch play has been there all night. There's nobody out here like for edge support. It's that See, hand again, off right up handoff. the middle, and he's gonna have about eight. It's like a it's like a broken record handoff up the middle eight. Handoff or a pitch. Yep. <laughs> so no answer for the run game. I have my daughter texting me that uh -oh. her game is almost over. Oh. Well, send somebody to get her. So. So it's going to be the end of the third. Yep, the end know. of the third quarter. We'll be back. Dunbar trails 42-14. Listening to Tiger Football. Tonight's sponsors include Alessino's Restaurant in Fort Myers, Buffalo Wings and Rings in Fort Myers, Bobby Dennis Handyman, serving the Fort Myers community, St. John First Missionary Baptist Church in Fort Myers, Veronica Shoemaker Florists in Fort Myers, Marathon Gas, Edison Oil, Bulk on Edison Avenue in Fort Myers, Cap City Auto, and Cabs on Fowler Street in Fort Myers, the Community Press Newspaper, serving your Dunbar, Fort Myers community, and Lee County, TLP. Financial Services, Southern Machine Steel, SMS on Flint and Edison Avenue here in Fort Myers. We thank tonight's sponsors for supporting Dunbar High School Athletics right here on Tiger FM 93.3, serving your Dunbar community and on TigerFM.com.
welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm Stadium where Bro has the ball second and I don't think they have it marked right, but second and two? Yep, second and two. Yep, they have it marked right. Second and two at the Dunbar 49 yard line. I think we need some more explosive plays to get so this snap. game. Moving. Carter Smith is running for his life. And he's going to well, make a man miss, and he's going to throw incomplete. So that's the first time that Dunbar got in there, and he showed his athleticism um, by getting away from the sack because that could have been a loss of about 12 yards. But that's the thing. I mean, that's, like I said, the first real pressure. So we have two high level teams playing here, so Yeah. And got two receivers right, man in motion, snap. And it's gonna be Carter Smith off the left side. He's gonna have the first down and more. Uh, gain of about eight on the play. They're pretty relentless on that forward motion. Yeah, I don't know, and then they just lost their uh, lineman there and Carter Smith was slow to get up on that one. I mean, I don't, I don't know why I'd have him still in the game here. Um, I'd save him. Yeah. I would be running him, that's for sure. Yeah. Like, I would tell him hand the ball off at all costs. I mean, Jenkins is average at probably eight yards a carry. So, got uh, two receivers right, two left. What's going on over there? I don't know. So snap, hand off to Jenkins up the middle. He's going to be hit and tackled for a gain of about one. It was a game of bumper cars and out there. And flag, late flag. It's usually, it's usually in the area of holding. Not a horse collar hold, though. No. And Falk said it was not a horse collar. He tackled him inside the helmet. Okay, I'm just getting, um, practicing my vocabulary usage. For like, I've never seen, like, seriously, it's a it's a foul or it's not a foul? Like, why is there, like, a... Are they having a powwow to discuss whether it's a foul? How's a referee like a chicken? Illegal block in the back, in the middle of the field. They call it, so I do have to say that the actual like umpire, the guy that's standing right there, has, or, oh no, he's. Isn't an umpire in baseball? There is an umpire in baseball. Um, but he's actually called the only penalties on Varel outside of like the roughing the passer. So got two receivers right, one to the left. Snap's going to be handed off to Jenkins, and he's going to be off the left side. He's going to have the penalty yardage back. Did a little hop, skip, yeah. jump there. But see, this is why, like, um, Carter Smith got creamed on that play because he did a, a read option. Like, it's not roughing the passer because if you're going to do read option, the, you can't just assume that he doesn't have the ball. You're taught to tackle him. All I heard from you was creamed, and I thought yeah. creamed corn, <laughs> and I wouldn't want... Carter Smith to get creamed. So second and eight. So right back where we started. Snap straight back to Pasco Smith. He's going to roll up in the pocket. He's going to throw, throw to it. an open man. It's going to be completed. He makes a man miss, oh, and he's going to be tackled tackle. inside the you know, at the 20. So broke. Kai Garcia making up ground. To, yeah. Because uh, uh, it was a missed tackle out there. Gary and Berger almost yeah. had him. Yeah, he doesn't miss a lot of tackles, so. He so the full fact, fun fact of the night is Dunbar is seven and two against private schools and was three and zero going in tonight against Pharrell. There's still a chance. <laughs> I feel it in my soul. So oh go oh, come on Anel Mark that was a pick six. Anel Mark read it the whole way. Instead of playing the ball, he played the man. And we got penalty flags down. I'm going to have to have a talk with Markle Berry Crunch. Uh, Wings is coming off the field. He doesn't have a helmet. Lost his bonnet. 
So it's going to be, I'm sure, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. In other news, Mr. Burnside in his jeans just took my breath away. So not used to seeing him in denim. <laughs> no, but he's on the field. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine if you're, if you're Carl C. Burnside. So you're the goat. Once again, it was a great play by Anel Mark. That could have been a pick six. So, Mark Olberry. you're gonna, you've got to be. These guys are spineless individuals. Unbelievable. These, these are act, poor excuses for officials. They call Dunbar for a personal foul when it probably was, but they, they have, yeah, exactly, Sammy. Whatever they want, they get. It's just like when we play Fort Myers. It's just like when we play, you know, North. Well, you know what? Maybe, like, we, those the, are these officials have it. Like, I will go on record and say that there is a bias against Dunbar football in this area. Use that word again because that's a big SAT word. So, bias. Snap, hand off on the – nope, Carter Smith keeps it, and he's going to be in the end zone for a, a touchdown. They're starting to – Feel the pressure. I'm starting to crack. So it's going to make the score 48 to 14, pending the extra point. Makes it a running clock. So, and it's just like, I'm like Coach Brett, and it's re beside the point. Like, once again, if you're going to call that bull in the middle of the field where it was clear that it was a personal foul on them both ways, then you got to do the same thing here. Like, the guy has no spine. He has no business refing any high school football games. Maybe he's a skeleton. He, 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 shouldn't he even, has no body. He shouldn't even be doing, like, timeout Vero. But it's like, like peewee football. Like, he wouldn't do well in peewee football. Well, those those officials are rough during Pop Warner also. I am now part of that crowd. I bet you someone would do better here. Honestly do. I honestly do. You want me to ask them tomorrow? They'll probably do this. I got a game. Go Storms. They're, they're probably they're probably the same guys. That's the <laughs> problem. Yep. But it's just like, I mean, it's, that doesn't determine the outcome of the game, but it's just like, if it happens, it, like it's just the truth. So, Falk on the replay, both players took each other's helmets off on the personal foul play. So it should have been a, a double both double time. So once again, Ooh, was that good or not good? It was low. Well, low kick that was uh, good. Was it lower than the officiating level of this game? It was right at squib level. I'll tell you that. Well, because the if you can go to negative numbers, that's the official <laughs> officials of this game. The spineless. Well, I can't know. I can't say that because the actual umpire has been doing a pretty good job. Even though I think he's the one that got overruled by the white hat, who probably went to Vero. Oh. Because do you notice around here though, like the people that ref these games all went to either North or Fort Myers. and Because they're old, and those are the only schools that were around. My point, and that's why I said there's a clear bias. I just like your use. I like to use the word bias quite a bit so all our listeners can. Uh, well, you can play it for the kids because it's true. Yes, that means you have a favor but that doesn't take any one side. But the thing is, that doesn't take, I mean, Vro played a fantastic football game tonight. They I'm did. not taking away. I'm just talking about just like in general. But that's it wouldn't what we be get. a football game if you couldn't complain about the officials. I know. It's fun, isn't it? I'm I love, you know, the the freedom of speech and the freedom of press. I just like telling jokes about where did the blind football player go. And, and it's really fun doing it when you get not get paid for it. So what are they going to do? Fire me? We are zillionaires. And let's Zero just, dollars. Oh, that was the throw of the game. 
the penalty flag went about 20 yards there for the kick out of bounds. So Dunbar will get good field position. Let's talk about number 77 on Dunbar, Tyler. He's a center. What a majestic mullet he's got growing oh, there. Tyler Barker Heckman. You know, that's Taylor's brother. Oh, and I Remember had we talked about this last time. That's right. And that's how you got in TJ the DJ was her. Her wedding DJ. Yes. Yes. I was one of Ty Taylor's teachers. He's that's hard to say. Tyler yeah. and Taylor Heckman. Yeah, he's super, teacher. super smart. Super smart. Great kid. Well, if the size of that mullet is the indication of the size of his brains, he is going to Harvard. Snap to Price. He's going to tuck it, and he's going to get hit by his own guy, then throw it up and complete the Fletcher it. for a gain of about three. So he took a loss of five and made it a gain of three. So it's a net of what? Eric Fletcher and that would be That would be a good... Like math thing for our kids that need to pass algebra. He took a five yard loss and made it into a three yard gain. So, what is. It's a word problem. Yeah, so, got three receivers right, one to the left, handoff straight up the middle. Goes right Singleton, up the middle, keep going. And he's going to have about seven. Oh, no, is, uh, is that Singleton? Yep, Chris Singleton. So, brings up a third in about three. Snap. It's going to be handed off to single, and again, he bounces out to the left side. This time he's the first down and more. He's going to be inside the 30, down to the 28. So gain of about 15 on the play. Chris Singleton, that was a pretty explosive play there. Yeah, a nice little uh, so water break, so six minutes or so to go. So we'll keep it here. It's a nice little, uh, you know, uh, cut he did there. Well, yeah. He pro well, it's time for hydration. Concentration, domination, so, to, co to quote Coach Jimmy. So um, let's see if we get Falk to give us some scores around the area besides. Uh, Any of our fans want to dial in, go for it. Um, yeah, we'll get Falk. He'll, he'll give us some scores so we can get update people around the area. Just can't stay away, that Carl Falk. So it brings up uh, first and 10 for Dunbar at the Vero 28 yard line. Got three receivers to the right. Fort Myers up on Riverdale, 38 14 in the fourth. Snap, straight back to pass. One bounce he's roll snap. to his right. He's looking, he's looking, has a man, but he's going to run, and he's going to be ho Ooh, oh. horse collar. No, not a horse collar, but it was. That a was a face mask or something. It, it, it's once again, it's, it's typical officiating here. I don't think it was a horse collar or a face mask. Well, they his they tackled head, him high, but. His head snapped back. Or we it, They'd call it against us. Um, Eastley up 26 to 8. Mariner up 48 to 6. So we got uh, three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. Price in the shotgun. Shout out to the Winters. Snap, straight back to pass. Was Price going to look out? Going to be completed out here, yep. and he's going to be ripped down. See, that was more of a horse collar. The Vikings are really making it difficult tonight. They've got a strong line. Uh, Mooney up 37 to 11 on ECS. Uh, that's not going to make Coach Donnell happy. Naples coming back 28-9 over Immokalee. Shout out to Coach Arndt. Okay. One of our brand uh, new fans. Throw into the end zone and it's incomplete. Fourth down. You get, uh, south beats North 14 7. Oh. So North is now 0 and 3. My daughter's at that game. That means they're done. 
It means the game's over. Yeah, I know. And she texted me to come pick her up. Well, I said, she can walk. I said, I Uber. Am, I am on the radio right now. Yeah, Uber. So my question is, how are they done? Do we do we have a running clock. I don't know. And we started early, right? right. It's seven twenty. Well, we started, started yeah, tw- seven twenty eight. So snap straight back to Pasco Price. It's fourth and nine. He's gonna roll. He he's did gonna a little dosey do, and he's gonna be sacked again. He held strong though for a hot second yeah. or twelve. Problem is, like he gets back, and it's like, um, I think what they're gonna have to teach him is like, there's like levels in the pocket. If you just like slide up a little bit in the pocket, um, he's looking to escape. And what Vero has done really well is like hedged him in so he couldn't escape either east or west, as you call it. It's like a trapped so rat. If he just like slides up in the pocket and keeps his eyes down the field, uh, makes some plays. I'm but I tell you what, <laughs> he is he is super tough because he's gotten hit multiple times tonight. So turnover on down. So this should be the last drive. And seriously, their starting quarterback is. They must not have another quarterback. Because why would you bring him out here? Even, like, if you're just handing the ball off. Snap. Nope, he's going to throw it out here to the right. And he's going to be completed for a gain of seven. It looks like a slide into home plate there. We'll we'll remember this. Next time we would play him, you know, up 35 and still throwing the ball in the fourth. They haven't shown a lot of class tonight. Savages. Not Catholic. Like, the Pope would be pretty ticked off right now at the sportsmanship or lack thereof. Lutherans wouldn't do that. I don't know. Lutherans definitely wouldn't do that. (laughs) So, uh, brings up a second, and we're going to call it eight. Snap, hand it off straight up the middle. Right up the middle. And uh, the fourth string running back takes it 12 yards. There was um, is even on the roster, 26. It's like Ventura Highway. Bobby Leckler. Straight up Ventura Don't Highway. Don't call him Bobby Boucher. No, he ran right up Ventura Highway. You can't hold anything back. <laughs> so uh, first and 10 now, at the 45 of Pharrell. And a lot of dead air, yeah. So hand off straight up the middle. Right up the middle. And Wings makes the tackle in the backfield. Hand off up the middle. Hand off up the middle. Pitch to the side. It was Wings. I know. Henry Brown on the tackle. So it brings up a second and ten. First time we got some penetration in there, and they're, uh, they're starting line still in there. So Now, let's tell our fans again, how many wings did wings eat? Like 60. Like did he, did he, the historian of the football team uh, put that down in record? I don't know, but I, I think he could give Joey, Joey Chestnut, Joey Jaws Chestnut, <laughs> handoff off the left side. Goes, right up the middle again. Uh, Bobby Boucher. But he has about two. Uh, this play is looking a little familiar. It's Bobby Leckler, but we're going to call him Bobby Boucher. Because at this point, is really anybody listening? Yes, our new baseball coach, oh. Art. And Nick Falk. Art. And Falk. Falk and maybe 12 other people. The Winters. Summer Kazire. The rest of our fans are actually at the game. There's a, there's a big group of them down there. So is that the end of the game? Yep, Uh, that's the end of the game. There's some emotion. So when you don't have a... So that is the first loss to a Lee County team in 18 games for Dunbar. So we'll be back uh, to to divvy out some game balls. We still do that in losses. Um, But we'll be back to divvy out game balls and recap it. And then we'll... We have senior night next week, so... Uh, please come out and support our seniors. So we'll be back here. WWDH Tiger FM 93.9 WMYE 91.9.
Tiger football. Tonight's sponsors include Joe North and the North Law Firm, Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity, GG Groceries on MLK in Fort Myers, followers of Christ Fellowship Ministries, John Tobler Construction Company, Big Will's Barbecue and Catering, Shelving and More Fort Myers, Five Guys Burgers and Fries Fort Myers, St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church, Young Life, you were made for this, King Saad of North Fort Myers. We thank tonight's sponsors for supporting Dunbar High School Athletics right here on Tiger FM 93.3, serving your Dunbar community and on TigerFM.com. Welcome back here to Joe North Law Firm. Why are you taking my picture? We take selfies. Uh, I, I'm going to be the historian of oh, this okay. radio station. <coughs> well, that was an unfortunate loss. Yeah, so we're not even a recap because we didn't score the second half, so I don't. we don't care about them scoring. Um, so we're going to divvy out some game balls here. Um, so we got to – what are they holding up a uh, – Oh, because you, you beat Dunbar for the first time in four times. Congratulations. Well, back to those game balls. Uh, yeah. So, but I tell you what, in the past, like, 